You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. The whole situation happened within, um, when I was with Alicia and the, the whole, when the, the affair came out in the paper. And um, I found some, some, my agent at the time, my dad, my, sorry, my dad was managing, managing me. And one of my um, publicists sent me an email of people that was leaking information to newspapers. And the dad was on it. Yeah, that's sad. Do you understand? And it's turned into a brawl and I'm doing all right. You know, I've got a few, you know, I've got these crazy Northerners coming up to me, like attacking me. And at the time, um, Mega's got chived in his eye and he's just going haywire. And I just felt that in the back of my neck. And I thought I got punched. And that was it. My ear was on my shoulder, James. Yeah, plugged. Yeah, I got plugged. And um, blood squirting up my neck, my ears on my shoulder. People are screaming. Um, four hour operation emergency operation in in Iron Appa, um, fighting for my life for four hours. And I've, James, you're not mad. I'm 41 years old, mate, and I don't forget it to this day because when I was in the hospital and I was passing out, out of all the people I fucking met in my life, James, out of everyone I've met in my life, do you know the only person I could see was my mother. The day that I left Javine's house, this is weird, imagine this, I've left her house, I'm driving home, to my marital home. And as I'm two miles from my house, Javine's rang me and gone, she knows, she knows, as I pulled up on my drive. Mate, the worst thing I've ever had to do, tell a woman that I'm cheating on her. Bring her on. Today's guest, we've got a handsome Harvey. Oh, my brother. How are you? Absolute pleasure, man. Likewise. That's it. So good to see you, bro. Yeah, likewise, I've been, man. I've been watching you along. Don't think that um, we ain't watching James, man. I'm a big fan of your show. Mm -hmm. um, love what you're doing. And you're just interviewing people from um, all different walks of life, man. Bad boys, um, musicians. So, mm -hmm. nah, the feeling's mutual, my yeah, friend. Yeah, no, it's an absolute pleasure. I've watched your stuff, man. 20 years in yeah. the game. You've kind of... I'm not from London, but obviously when you're from the streets yourself and you yeah. watch just kids from the street just making waves all, all over TV at yeah. awards, it's sexy, man. It's mental, yeah. James, man. I mean, I never thought I would ever be in this position in terms of like entertainment. Everyone knew me, my life, everyone that knew me in Battersea, South London, slash Clapham Junction, they knew me as playing football, being a footballer. As a young kid, I was at Chelsea and, you know, that was my whole path. That's what I thought I was going to go all the way and, 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 um, enjoy my life, but um, it, it went left, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so Solid came, so Solid came into the picture uh -huh. and it, um, it, it opened up a can of worms, but um, I would never change it, man. He's, um, it's made me the man that I am today. Yeah, you can't change it. Yeah, like, people always ask not. me, would you change your password? I fuck, because that's where your growth is. That's exactly. where you learn. And as we're maturing, I'm still, I'm 37 years young. I'm still trying to mature. As, it's still a battle. It's still a journey. I'm, like, still, a, I'm still a big kid, yeah. James, and I'm 41. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? How was it turning 40? It was weird. So my 40th was massive. I had a, I had a, um, a big party on a, um, a yacht in London and all my friends and family came through and all artists that I'm friends with. I booked heart. Imagine I had Heartless crew play at my birthday party who was our enemies back in the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in the day, we've had like 30 man rules with these guys. So it's so weird how you develop and evolve and then become friends. And next, you know, these guys are now playing at my birthday party. We're like one big family. So yeah, it was weird. That's when I said, I'm old now. When I seen the four row against my name and the pe <laughs> people started fucking buying me like 40 year old mugs and all yeah. that. And I said, nah, you're not taking a piss now, yeah. innit? So yeah, it was, it was a mad experience. Yeah, but, um, but at least you've left the 40, brother. Fucking still here, man. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? There's a lot of people here. which we'll touch on. Of course. This is in your manner just now, but I see. Yeah, man, you're in, you're in the ends, bro. Do you bro. know what I mean? So, this, is, this is home, yeah, bro. This is home. There's so fucking Fruit Loops down yeah, here as well, mate. Bro, they're all my family. <laughs> 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 couple of boys are pulling up later, so and, but they're fans of you. Yeah. When I spoke to a couple of like the G's from round there and that, that that's like family to me. I was like, yeah, James English is interviewing me. There's like, bro, we love that guy, man. Mm -hmm. So you got a couple of the yeah, boys co that. coming yeah. out to meet you. Can't you know, wait, man. You know I'm gonna. Um, I know you interview a lot of people and they just leave it there, but it's only right that you're in my area that I have to take you to the streets where so so they come from. Mm -hmm. Why is it won't be authentic, yeah, man? Of course, man. I, mean? I love that shit. Yeah. I gotta take you to the streets. Yeah. I always go back to the start of my guest brother. Where you grew up? And how it all began? Yeah. So. Battersea, South London, um, SW11. I grew up in um, Lucas Court, which is literally a stone's throw from where we are now. But um, where it started, James, was 
my dad came from Jamaica as a young man, do you know what I mean? And then my dad was in the Marines and he met my mum. My mum was from Cardiff, but she kind of ran away from her mums and ended up in Plymouth. This is crazy, at her mother's. Obviously my dad's a Marine. What happens? A ship docks, doesn't it? Soldiers, isn't it? You know, looking for women. <laughs> he, he meets my mum. Yeah. Within a year, they fall in love. And um, I'm made out of that. Um, my mum had me at 17 years old. My dad's sisters was then in, was then living in Battersea, South London. So my dad's obviously come down to South London and that's where my dad's crazy leg legacy started, yeah. man. My dad, my dad's well known. My dad was very active um, on the streets and yeah, very well yeah, known. Yeah, your dad was a bad boy. Plus he was in the gladiators. Yeah, and how crazy is that? that is how crazy is that? So it's just, I remember the first story, like my, what was good about my dad? Um, he kept that side of life away from me. He didn't want his son to be involved in that. And um, he didn't really, he didn't glorify it. You know what I mean? He was more um, more focused on on me being the best person that I can be, honestly. Do you know what I mean? Don't go down the route that he did. And I remember one night when I knew my dad was really serious was, um, I think I was about six or seven. And I heard there was a big altercation in South London and my dad was involved. And I remember like getting in bed, my mum put me in the bed and my dad's got like butterfly stitches down the side of his face. But as a six, seven year old, you're not really thinking nothing of it. And I remember like blood like dripping down his face. And I was thinking, what the fuck's going on here? And it's only when I got older, I went, dad, what actually happened then? And obviously that's when my dad obviously went to um, go and deal with someone that disrespected him, dealt with him, but he got a butterfly across the face at the same time. So that's the first time I kind of seen like, I don't know, violence in my home. Cause he kept, he kept that out of the home. Do you know what I mean? I've seen all the boys pull up, all this, all this firm come to the house late at night, but I'd have to go to bed, wouldn't I? They'd be downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be downstairs in the front room. So that's when I started to notice getting older. I said, nah, my dad's really active in this thing. And then I kind of noticed the way I used to get treated when people knew that I was my dad's son. Um, the fear, the respect, like you have to make sure that um, this boy is looked after. I was getting into nightclubs, James, um, at 16 years old that I shouldn't have been in just because the doorman yeah. couldn't say no to me. Mm -hmm. Because they don't, they don't want that problem with my father in the yeah. morning. But um, one thing I do respect him for, he just didn't glorify it, bro. He didn't say to me like, because I've lived this life, you got to go down that route. My dad knew that I was talented. I was a talented sportsman. I was a talented musician. So um, yeah, he kept it away from me, man. But um, obviously I, I knew the legacy yeah. when I used to go to Bethnal Green. He was known in South London and he used to knock about in Bethnal Green too. So that's how I knew about all the kind of like- How did they end up in Gladiators? It's so mad. Because he was a professional, um, Bodybuilder, like the guy is so smart, man. Do you know what I mean? And that's mad, James. I keep it 100. Me and my dad don't even talk now. That's sad. But it, it's sad, isn't it? But mm. it's my father. So yeah. I still give him that respect. But um, he created me and that's the way it goes, isn't it? Me and him both don't back down. So that's mm. why we don't we don't agree with certain things. But he was just a talented, a, a very talented man and a very talented athlete. And I think he got a phone call to go for the gladiator trials. And I remember coming home from primary school. And he's going, yeah, son, I've been asked to go and do the trials. And at the time, do you remember Wolf? Yeah. 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 Wolf was his good friend, Saracen. Mm -hmm. well, these are all his mates. I always remember the bum chair <laughs> yeah. though. Watch this now, yeah. I'm gonna do some good story. Uh -huh. Like some good story. So he's gone for the trial. And like within two days later, he's like, right, I've got it. You know, they're gonna formulate my character. I'm gonna be Bullet. I'm gonna be in the same series as Shadow. And I'm saying, nah, man, this is a fucking joke. So I remember the first weekend, he took all the family down there. And I'm living every kid's fucking dream. First person that walks in the dressing room is John. Three, yeah, two, yeah, Scott, he's going. One, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> fuck you, no. And um, I was just that lucky kid that after they finished filming, I'm, me and my cousins are just running around the Gladiator set after mm. all the fans are out, just jumping over, like jumping up the Travelator. Just every kid's dream, do you yeah. know what I mean? And John shouting at us, come off the set, get off the fucking set. And this is where everyone's gonna hate me and you're gonna hate me for this. I remember, um, a woman going when I was a kid, like, oh, he's so cute. Come and sit on my lap. And she put me on her lap and it was Jet. Do you remember Jet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was smoking. Oh. That's the only reason I watched that. Jet and Phoenix. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was, and I remember going to school and literally when I walked into school, my primary school, which is across the road from where you're interviewing me right now. I mean, I was like a celebrity myself just mm. because of um, who my father was. And then about a year down the line, that's when I first knew about the price of success. My dad was in the news of the world. Um, he beat up an MP. Do not ask me how this happened. Because <laughs> um, at the time, that's what I'm saying, my dad, he, he lives that life, but he's also a very smart man. So mm -hmm. he was like a sports minister for the House of Commons. And I don't know, an incident happened with a member of parliament and my dad's weighed him in. 
So, and they've, they've printed it all in the paper. And then um, that's when I seen the negative side, like the kind of like journalist turn up outside my mum's house. My dad got sacked, obviously from gladiators because they can't have, naturally ITV can't have that type of press. And um, yeah, so he probably lasted about a, a, a year and a half in, um, in gladiators. How did that affect your dad? It affected him a lot, but... Because that's life-changing. It is life-changing, but my dad's a typical Jamaican, stubborn, doesn't really let... I've never seen my dad cry, not once in my life. I think maybe when my grandfather died and me and my dad went to Jamaica when I was 15, my dad was sleeping, like he was in his sleep and he was crying in his sleep, but it wasn't like... It was yeah. kind of like just a tear just running down his face. And I remember like me and him were sleeping in the same bed, getting ready to bury his father in Jamaica, like fucking blazing hot heat. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at him and I was like, what the fuck? But it's, it was weird. Like my dad's six foot six, James, nine, you know, 19 to 20 stone. And I think that's the only time I've ever seen a teardrop come out of his eye. He would not let, he, would, he won't let anyone into his emotion. That's, that's the, this the type of man he was. He's a typical tough Jamaican man. You know, when he first came from Jamaica, before he came to Battersea, he went to stay at his mum's in Felton. So there he dealt with a lot of racism. Fel Felton was a predominantly white mm -hmm. area. So that's where obviously he was fighting a lot every day doing all the usual things like, you know, nicking cars yeah. and just all the usual things. Standing like, his ground. Yeah, standing his ground. But he's a man that I've always looked up to. I'm like, does he fear anything? You know, mm. that, what, what does he fear? You know, he, he was my hero as, as a young kid. And Do I you see a lot of yourself in your dad though with yeah, the stubbornness? Yeah. Why did you fall out? Is that something that can't be resolved? Because life is too short. Like you're talking about your dad burying his dad and crying. So no matter how tough you are, no matter how much you block it out, especially mm. if he's got grandkids, that'll be hurting him just as well as it hurt, 100%. hurting you. Is there no way you can resolve it? Do you know what it is, James? The biggest thing for me is that when I... The whole situation happened within um, when I was with Alicia and the, the whole when the, the affair came out in the paper. And um, I found some, some... My agent at the time... My dad, my, sorry, my dad was managing, managing me. And one of my um, publicists sent me an email of people that was leaking information to newspapers. And- The dad was on it. Yeah, that's sad. Do you understand? And- Is that true though or can that- It's a, it's a tough one because to, to this day, he would deny it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it's, um, it got to a point that where I felt like my dad is jealous of his own son's success. Do you understand what I'm saying? And my mum wasn't keen on my dad managing me, you know, because my mum and dad had been split up since I was 12 years old. But my mum would never, she was going, you know what, son, go down that road, you'll learn for yourself. And I didn't want to go back and go, mum, you was right. Yeah. But we just clashed, man. I felt, I, I didn't feel like my dad had my best interest at heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? I felt like that he wished he lived that life. With the gladiators, his yeah, success lived yes, short. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And when I became successful, in the things that I had done and took it to the highest le level possible, um, I felt that he should be embracing that. Like, i.e. my son, I want my son to be 10 times greater than I am. How can I be jealous of my own son? But um, that's what I felt. And then certain things that happen, happened, I felt like when I was having my negative moments, my dad enjoyed the fall of me. That's how I felt around that time. And I do agree that, um, yeah, he has grandkids and, I, and, and I've never wanted, wanted to deprive him of that. But there's certain things at this at this moment in time that I've healed a lot, James. I've healed a lot. I've been I've never I ain't been a saint. I've been the first to put my hands up. I've healed a lot. But um, there's something at this precise moment that I just can't heal the rift with him. My, my, God talks to me. My soul talks to me, and I'm like, nah. Too many disrespects. How can you do that to your own son? I'm not saying I'm gonna hold on to that emotion for the rest of my life because for me to go to my grave not talking to my dad, that is not what I wanted in my life. You know, Miss Dynamite called me and she's had certain altercations with her family members. And she called me and she said, Harvey, she says, just resolve it. She said, he's got to deal with the problem. So anything that he's done, he's got to take to his grave. But she's like, just be the bigger man. And I agree with her, but I just haven't got to that place. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, so, it can take time, but forgiveness yeah. is so hard, yeah. but it's, it's yeah. also key to elevate yourself to another 100%, level because 100%. the shit that I've had to forgive people for through the years has been difficult. Like people always tell me, oh, I'm good at giving advice. Yeah. I'm telling you this shit, but I yeah. still don't fucking exactly. do it. So it's hard. Exactly. But hopefully one day you can resolve it because hopefully. you can, you can you speak very highly of your dad. Hopefully. He may have just been a bit envious of your success and maybe obviously devastated that he could have been as successful going through his career. Yeah. 
and it maybe brought out a lot of issues like he's fucked it because you, in that life you know yourself you can't be both you can't be good and bad 100% you've either, you've either got to fly straight or else you will eventually you crash and burn yeah. you can't and what it was is like I think with my dad the old school generation of our parents that was born in like the 60s they're fucking wrong and strong whereas our generation I'm the first person to go I was wrong that's how I healed in my life in that situation depending on what the situation is and what I gave to that situation I'll be the first ones to hold my hands up Hand, my hands up if I'm fucking wrong yeah. but that generation of parents you are wrong no I'm not the sky is blue it's fucking red it's like talking mm. to a brick wall so all I'm looking all I'm probably looking from afar is that for us to move forward just acknowledge certain things that you've done because I will do the same I'm not saying that is a one way argument James I'm not saying that I'm going to turn around and go it was just you 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 because I obviously had a, a part to play in it but just fucking be honest, mate. To say sorry costs nothing. I say it to my wife. If I'm wrong with my wife, I'm sorry. That's why me and my wife are tight. Because we, 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 you know, from our past relationships, which wasn't good, which wasn't healthy, we vouched that. Let's talk about everything, even if it's uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? If you're wrong, just say sorry. We don't need to like delay the problem and make it worse in our house. That's why we stay as a unit in our home. But I don't know if my dad sh shares the same yeah. views. So... But Hopefully, I, I get there. It's still a, the life that you've been brought up in, being from Battersea, it's, it's also got the reputation of being wild. Yeah. But taking through a gladiator, seeing your dad on the telly, and then obviously a successful footballer playing with Chelsea, schoolboys. Did you get an injury at Chelsea? Yeah, so Chelsea, I was fine. Yeah. Um, I got scouted by Chelsea at 11 years old when I played for um, for West London. So I was at Chelsea from 11 to 15. But at the time, it, um, there was me and another left back called Neil Clement. Now, Neil Clement went on to play for West Brom, mm -hmm. international playing the Premier League. And when we got to um, them giving out the, um, the academy contracts, they had to make a decision. They didn't want to take on two, two fullbacks. So they released me and they gave Neil Clement the contract. Ray Clements, RIP, big yeah. influence in my life. And then Ray Clements and Terry Gibson asked me to come down to Barnet. And I played two games and they, they, they gave me two years straight away. So I actually done my, my academy at Barnet Football Club with, um, with Ray Clements and what a big influence he was on my life. And, Especially, I remember when I went there, I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder. I had that South South London mentality. You know that London mentality yeah. that we all have? The swagger. Yeah, and I remember kicking off. We played against Leighton Orient. And I remember kicking off with one of my own teammates. And listen, James, I said, I, I don't fear no one. I don't fear no man, bro. You know, no man is no wall. But Ray Clements, fucking shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I've basically um, kicked off with one of the players. And he's like, you know, have an argument with your teammates, but just know you lot are meant to go to war together. You're not meant to be against each other. And I've kicked off and I was in the wrong. And Ray Clements has literally got me like this in the change room, held me by my throat, held me up in the air like that and said, you don't bring that fucking cocky South London attitude down here. This is a professional football club. You conduct yourself in the right manner. And he said to me, you do that again, I'll kick you out of this club faster than you can say peak of fucking boo. Mm -hmm. And I went, Yes, Scaffa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was it. And mm -hmm. years later, which was two years ago, because um, he died recently, I went. To, I got invited to Crystal Palace by um, Steve Parrish, the chairman. And I'm sitting in a boardroom with all the you know Palace execs and Ray Clements walks in and he walks in, he goes, I am so fucking proud of you. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, because he see my career and what I went on to do. He goes, I didn't know you could fucking sing. <laughs> I said, uh -huh. I said, Clem, I used to rap on the coast of the boys. Mm -hmm. I kept it quiet. Mm -hmm. But he said, like, you're a prime example of um how that you didn't rest on your laurels. You know, the football didn't work out. Yes, I had also a good career in semi-pro football when I was played for AFC Wimbledon and, you know, I earned good money from it. But he's, you didn't feel sorry for yourself. You went and maintained another career and became successful in that. Because a lot of boys that come out of football and they get released, yeah. they can't handle it. Look at the young boy from Manchester City the other day. He got released and killed himself. Yeah. Um. So, and I believe that the the new generation they're not built, they're not no, with no offense they're not as tough of us. Yeah, they're weak. They're very weak, mentally weak. Social media plays a part. It plays that. a big part, as we know. So, um, yeah, man, that that, that was my my journey mm -hmm. journey as a young. Why do you, why do you think you never kicked on at football? Because the mentality you've got now is I ain't gonna quit. Yeah. So what happened then? at that age was you, were you getting support from your dad was he ever say he's proud of you because when you talk about Ray there you can see that emotion like, like, like it's funny because no matter how like, my success is just growing yeah but even now the people that's close to you like sometimes you don't get I'm proud of you or the pat in the back we say we don't fucking want it but just that two seconds to say look 
I'm fucking proud of you because this is it's a lonely fucking road. Yep. Success, it's lonely to change and, and try and kick on because 100%. nobody can see the vision. But sometimes that's all you need. Do you think if you had that you must the, your mum and dad must have supported you, but were you getting the support at an early age, 15, 16, 17, from your dad to say, you can do it, I believe in you, or was it just all? No, my mum and my stepfather. Mm -hmm. My stepfather who passed away, who's the original Battersea legend that everyone knows, tattooed on my hand, Sugar mm -hmm. Ray. He was a scout. Is he a boxer? No, it was weird. We, we, he was a big guy. Mm -hmm. So he was actually a famous DJ in Battersea, yeah. like a local famous DJ, but just because of his size. And he had a voice like Barry White. So he was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. Strong. Yeah, so... No, he was a major influence, major influence to me and my mum. My mum was the woman that was getting up seven o'clock in the morning when I was at Chelsea, driving me to um, Hatton Cross where the training ground was. My mum was the one that was driving me 300 miles um, to Lincoln, you know, to play games. My mum was the one that was sacrificing her own life. My mum was the one that would say, well done, son. Good luck, son. Mm -hmm. Pick me up when I'm down. Pick me up when I'm released. It was my mum. And I'm not just trying to portray that, oh, you know, I was, you know, estranged to my, to my father but he just didn't offer that support my dad come to watch me once in a cup final and he still turned up late yeah got there probably about 20 minutes to go and this was a big cup big cup final this was me playing for west london at the time you know we, we was playing against south london rio ferdinand all these boys big game you know and when we was all young kids so he my dad was all about himself he was about himself you know what i mean my dad would be stay at home all day like a vampire and go out at night we don't know what he's doing at night, yeah. innit? That's dad. So yeah. I never had that support. So no, he wouldn't be the one going, good luck. When when my mum and dad split up at 12 years old. Did that affect you? Massively. Because that's when I realised how much my mum run the house. Because what it was that... Did she put up a lot of shit with your yeah, dad? Yeah, 100%. And I came home from school. And my house was just over the bridge out this window. Mm, that's <laughs> mad, isn't it? It's mad. Yeah. I'm probably the first person in the podcast going, just out this window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm walking home and I've walked into my house and my dad's sitting at a table and he's got like scratch marks up his hand. So I can see that him and my mum have had a fight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And my mum just said to me, she was like, my mum was distraught. And she says, said to me, I've got to leave son. So my mum went to Plymouth to stay at her sister's for six months, six to eight months. I stayed in Battersea with my father. And that's when I realized how much my mum kept the house together. That's when I realised my dad was a womaniser. Because within time of my mum leaving, women were turning up. Yeah. My house felt unbalanced. My, one of my cousins had to come and live with me. I was so lost. I was like, where's my mum? What is going on? Mm -hmm. My dad would literally go out at night time. I'm 12, 13, James. I won't get back till like four o'clock in the morning. Just leave me in the house. Yeah. My, my auntie Maxine, my mum's friends ring me like, are you okay? So that's when I started to notice the cracks. And then he was, he, then he was like, feeding information, negative information to me about my mum to try and get me to turn against my mum. And then she came back and got me, like, I, bet, I think about eight months later. And my mum said, I don't want nothing. They was married at the time. My mum was like, I don't want all the stuff that I've built up. I don't want the flat. I don't want nothing. I just want to leave with my son. Me and my mum fucking lived in a hostel in Clapham Common, a one bedroom fucking hostel. My mum left with, she built up everything in the house and she left with fuck all. We lived in a hostel in um, Clapham Common. We then had to go and live in a woman's house with a, with a, who had a son. She had to rent a room in there. I had to sleep in a room with my mum on like a fold out bed. My mum lost everything. And then we got our first flat in Battersea through the council. And because my mum worked for the council, because my mum was a youth worker, that's when I was like, yeah, we're back, man. And, me, and my mum just built herself back up mm -hmm. and got back on her feet. And then my stepfather lived in Battersea. He was, he was like a scout. Sugar Ray, mm -hmm. he was like a scout and he worked in a youth club with my mum. And as I'm getting old, I'm like, I swear these two are seeing each other. <laughs> <laughs> but my mum, uh -huh. my mum doesn't want to tell me because she's like- Scared? Yeah, she's like, Junior, no matter what, he doesn't see anything past his dad. Mm -hmm. Another man in my fucking house. I'll yeah. fucking cut him in his yeah. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Plunge him in his sleep. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, yeah. James? And um, he was the biggest influence and supporter and stepfather to me, I could ever have dreamed of. Ray, my mum's partner. That's when my life changed. He supported my mum. Oh, he was a trooper, man. He died yeah. four years ago. Yeah, we we buried that. him. We buried him across the road. There's a Shit, church man. the other side of this building. You should get a fucking flat in here, bro, man. I know. So many memories. Like, if you've seen this road, this mm -hmm. literally road, there was a thousand people. That's how much he was loved in the ghetto. A thousand 
people. You're talking bad boys, girls, everyone had respect for him. He was the only guy in this fucking area that two boys would be in beef and one would pull out a gun and Ray would step in front of you and go, no. And people had that much respect for him. That boy ain't busting that gun, James. Mm -hmm. he, ain't, he ain't letting off that gun. He was the only person that could do it. I yeah. don't know how he had that peep. He was respected by everyone, by the baddest gangster in the ends mm -hmm. to the mothers. He was just a people's person. He looked out for his community and he's the one that showed me about, never forget where you come from. Always look after people that help you. Always kept me humble within So Solid. What a fucking man. Yeah. So he was my mum's rock, man. So he kind of helped your career even to this day. Massively, still, yeah. massively. So what happened with the football then when you started going from Chelsea and started moving down the leagues? Mm, were you it. drinking or anything, shagging about? Night, so this is where it started, where I was starting to go off the rails. So what it was, as I when I left Barnet, mm -hmm. I got bought by Aldershot. I had two good seasons there. And then um, I've just started getting into So Solid then. Started getting into So Solid. So Mega Man kind of heard that I could MC, but I'm like, fucking MC, and what the fuck's that? Like, mm. this ain't paying no bills for me. But like, Mega and Romeo keep harassing me. But they're buzz. Next thing I'm hearing about this buzz in South London of Mega Man and Romeo, Mega Man and Romeo. I then move from Aldershot to Slough Town. I break my ankle in training, a freak accident. So I'm spending a lot of time back in the ends now. But when I'm coming back to the end, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why is everyone playing Mega Man and Romeo songs out their cars? Why is everyone listening to Mega Man and Romeo on a Sunday afternoon? I go to meet Romeo, me and him walk to like the local high street and girls are chasing him down the street and screaming. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fucking Marvin, this doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. And he's like, yeah, like the so solid thing's going well. Um, yeah, man, we're gonna be big. And I'm looking at him like, so Romeo's like, listen, I MC in the local pub called The Litton Tree. So I go, I go and MC with him. He pays me 50 quid out, out of his money. He's like, yeah, look, the girls like you, man. Carry on, come here every week. So I started to meet him every Friday in a local pub. James, there's probably about a fucking 100 people in there, yeah. geezer. Mm -hmm. But we're like local heroes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then next, you know, Mega goes, look, I wanna, I wanna, I'm wanna, i starting this group so solid. I want you to come to the radio station and try you out. So I go to the radio station a week later. Now remember James, I've been a footballer. I've, you've been used to like Friday nights, focus, pasta, water, yeah. wake mm -hmm. up the next day. Now I'm discovering Friday nights. That's when it all started, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's when the weed comes into play. Yeah. <laughs> Were you burn. smoking beforehand? No. no, and that's mad what people don't realize about me. This is what's gonna throw everyone. I didn't start smoking weed until I was 21. Yeah, that's nuts. Never put that? a spliff in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Cause obviously I used to get drug tested at football and. I was focused and see me, James, I can't be influenced by people. So I could be around my boys that, you know, they might have fucking, I don't know, weed around yeah. them or shooters, but it doesn't mean I'd be like, well, that's your life. This is mine. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people respected me in my community because Junior Harvey is, is who he is. Listen, mate, if you choose to sell drugs, that's your path. It's not my fucking path. Selling drugs or anything like that never interested me. And I'm too paranoid. Do you know what I mean? I'd be fucking, I've already, I've already got 65 cameras outside my house anyway. <laughs> what would I be like if I sold fucking yeah. drugs? I wouldn't be able to sleep. <laughs> yeah. And I'm honest. Mm -hmm. I, so why am I going to do something that is out of my depths? Do you know what I mean? If you wanted to come to me back in the day, mm -hmm. yeah, I was the credit card guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That was my hustle. But yeah, it was just, that can be difficult though, because I always say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Well, there you go. Do you know what I mean? So there you, go. you do spend enough time with it, you do get sucked in, because I was the same as you. I played for Hibs yeah. up in Glasgow, uh, Edinburgh. I was a Jack Rabbit. My dad was a bouncer. Yes. So I used to go to the most popular nightclub in Glasgow at 15, tell mm. all the girls I was playing for the first team. There you go. I was walking down, no queue, just walking in up the stairs and I thought it was a fucking boy. Well, we shared the same yeah, lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at the time, I played for Chelsea for this team. <laughs> but I don't see you on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't even have Google as a bad yeah, yeah, so they yeah. couldn't Google me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, exactly what you just said. You know, I do, you know, our dads have got the respect. And then once Romeo started, um, like I said, he, he brought me to my, this is the first rave that I ever got paid for. And you're going to know this guy. I'm sure you've heard of Terry Stone. Yeah, no, no, Terry. Right, you know, Terry. Those are the films and acting. In, me yeah, and Terry yeah, yeah. live in the same area. He was supposed to come on a podcast actually, but obviously lockdown. Yeah, I bumped into Terry yeah. in my local, me and we, like, we drink at the local, same uh -huh. local Starbucks. So mm -hmm. like, he's like family to me. And Terry paid me a hundred quid for um, his rave, Garage Nation. And that's when Romeo said to me, look, Terry wants you to come along. He likes the way you MC. And he's gonna pay me. And I said, he's gonna fucking pay me for chatting shit. Yeah, brilliant. 
And now, obviously, now at the time, Mega's like, listen, so solid's formulated. Mega started to get me in studio. And James, I don't know what the fuck happened. We made 21 seconds. And Gospel Truth, when we made 21 seconds, I was still playing football at the time. I was at Aldershot. Mm -hmm. And I went down to um, do my 21 seconds verse. And Mega was like, yeah, you had like a stop clock. And I had an argument with him because I kept going to him, when I'm finishing my lyric, it doesn't sound like it should finish. It doesn't sound like the end of a 16 bar. So anyone that don't know what bars are, that's mm -hmm. music, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Mega was like, no, trust me, trust me. So I've left the studio feeling very weird. Like, I don't like the way this has ended. Like, I felt like I could have carried on. Meg's like, trust me, I know what I'm doing. We used to have these, we used to have our own office in Wandsworth. So there's 30 of us in the office, 30 of us. And Meg was like, everyone sit down. Listen to this. CD them times, innit? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. What you laughing at? What the fuck? is this I've never heard anything like this before this is fucking special and I'm on it mega what the hell is this that chorus is genius he then tells us listen we've been offered a million pound deal by Sony <laughs> <laughs> what but guess what we're not taking it no why is that because they want to change the production on 21 seconds. Mega's like, I'm not break breaking for no one. These labels think, because we come off the fucking streets, we're just going to give you all our product. Do you know what I mean? A lot of this money and a lot of the this vision was made off illegal money, James, as you know. Yeah. Getting the records pressed, putting on the raves. You know, we had a lot of underground raves, dealing with, you know, fucking loads of drama. As you know, I'm from Clapham Junction. So at that time, our biggest enemies was Brixton. As a Clapham Junction boy, I couldn't go Brixton as a kid. So all the dramas that we had to deal with just to get in so solid out there. So Mega's like, why am I going to hand over all my rights to a label who's going to like take it over, fuck up the music and take all the credit? He then goes down the road and signs to Relentless Records for 250,000. I'm looking at this cunt like, are you all right, mate? Mm -hmm. They offered us a meal. Nah, trust me. I know what I'm doing. They don't want to change the production. And Glyn Aitken, who's behind Emily Sand, the guy that signed us and lots of great artists said, no, we're going to give you 250, but to see the bigger picture, we, we, we share the vision. Everything that you lot want to do, we're going to give you full creative control. We're not going to get involved. We're just going to advise you. Six months later, biggest, biggest selling single. Number, Number one. one in the charts, knocked off Atomic Kitten. Another six months down the line, MOBO Award, Brit Award. Next year, I'm sitting there and fucking, I'm walking down top of the pops and Nelly Furtado's walking past me going, I love you guys. Robbie Williams is going, you lot are wicked. I'm going, what the fuck is going yeah. on? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I mean, uh -huh. the year we won the MOBOs, um, that was massive. But fuck that, James. When you win a Brit Award, that's when you know you've been accepted. Coldplay and Kylie Minogue was in our yeah, mega category. Stars. We beat them. These people are over 80 million records sold. So solid to current to, to, to date has only sold 7 million records. I'm saying only, so that's amazing. Yeah. But when you're dealing with Coldplay's, Kylie Minogue's, Robbie Williams, it's a different level. So what right did we have to win British, best British video that day? No right. So when we won it, I said, fucking hell. Mm -hmm. That's when my life changed. That's when the profile became massive. That's when I knew what we'd done had, had impacted the whole of England. And how were you handling that then? Because you, Romeo, man, handsome bastards, like just, if I, obviously not getting that status and mm. the talent that he's had, like people don't realise that the, the depths that you need to go to be successful, yeah. especially coming from the streets, you would have been outsiders. I'm not giving them a chance. So for somebody to give you a chance anyway and say, yeah, I'm backing them, it must have been a positive enemy, but 100%. to then get that success, how did you handle that coming? You've been, you've kind of been through it, but not to that level. Yeah. Then you've got the limelight, then you've got the press, then you've got paparazzi. Did you thrive on it or did you start taking a step back when it started coming your way? James, I was so fucking unhappy. It was a joke because as you know, with success comes enemies now. Mm -hmm. And every individual member in So Solid has got their own individual problems. Now, if you look at people like Mega Man, um, Mac, Face, G-Man, they are the original ones in So Solid that was active on the streets, in wars, in gang wars, in real beef. So now your enemies follow you into the music now. So now you've got dramas with Brixton and other crews. But what happens now? You've now exposed yourself to other gangs now. So now the North London boys on the robust. 
Moss Side boys are threatening us. Birmingham boys are threatening us. Burger Bar boys, Moss Side. Bar. Every fucking gang you can name, I've, you, you name it, I've been threatened by them. Well, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'm like, and what's weird for me, I don't know these people, mm. James. So obviously this is what comes with the territory. The territory. This is jealousy. And then um, we got on a plane to Napa and I knew the night was going too, too well because Channel 4, it was just before 21 Seconds launched on the mainstream. It was already brewing on the underground, but it wasn't released yet. And me, Megra and Romeo and Dan the Man went to Napa. And it's going too well. Remember the, the whole island, like you can see the guys are all jealous there. You've got all like different sets of gangs all over in Aya Napa. But remember, we got all the girls, got 20 girls rolling with us. We got all the mopeds, we're rolling with like all the Cypriot guys. We got girls in the back of our mopeds. You know how it goes back then, shagging for fun, living out sexual dreams. Yes, you know what I mean? Man, I wish I was yeah. rough, you see, You know, yeah, we're you the know. big Scottish white yeah, guy, you've been mate. fucking loving us. You could have been oxide. You could have been oxide. Yeah. Yeah. Oxide are like this. Fucking <laughs> hell. Mustard. Yeah. So that was that. And then um, I knew it because I remember it, right? I said, the day's going too well. We was with these birds all day. And I had all these girls in the back of my moped. And then um, we we got invited to a club at night time. And as we got to the club, I just felt this bad feeling in my heart. Just, like, I had two birds sitting in my lap, fucking popping. We've done about 10 grand's worth of bottles of champagne in there. Pop, pop, pop. Oh, it's so solid. Everyone wants a piece of so solid. And as I turned around, Romeo, I seen the look in Romeo's eyes and Romeo said, shit, Mega's kicking off. And I don't know what the fuck was going on. I've literally jumped over the um, the barriers in the club. And he's surrounded by all these boys from up north, Manchester and that. And I think Manchester, fucking Liverpool. There was loads of northerners involved. They was all against us. Mm -hmm. Everyone wanted to do us. And it's escalated, James, into a 20-man brawl. And there was only four of us, yeah? And knives have come out everywhere. And I can look after myself, James, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm not no gangster, bruv, but people know me in Batsea. You ask anyone in Batsea, they know me as a fighter. People that I've laid out in Batsea, they know who's watching this, do you understand? I can just defend myself. I don't go out there and cause trouble, but um, if you trouble my friends, I'm gonna do whatever I have to do by any means necessary. That's the way the world works. And it's turned into a brawl and I'm doing all right. You know, I've got a few, you know, I've got these crazy Northerners coming up to me, like attacking me. And at the time, um, Mega's got chived in his eye, and it's just going haywire. And I just felt that in the back of my neck. And I thought I got punched. And that was it. My ear was on my shoulder, James. Yeah, plugged. Yeah, I got plugged. And um, blood squirting up my neck. My ears on my shoulder. People are screaming. Um, four hour operation, emergency operation in, in Ayanapa. Um, fighting for my life for four hours. And I've, James, you're not mad. I'm 41 years old, mate. And I don't forget it to this day. Because when I was in the hospital and I was passing out, out of all the people I fucking met in my life, James, out of everyone I've met in my life, do you know the only person I could see was my mother. I swear to God. I remember the nurse injecting adrenaline into me. I remember this Asian kid that got me to the hospital that saved my life. To this day, I don't know where this kid is. And I remember people screaming around me and all the nurses. I knew it was serious because the nurses was running. Shit. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I've lost a lot of blood. And all I could see in my subconscious was my mum doing this. So all the fucking people that I've met at 20 years of my life at that time, because I got stabbed at 20, meant fuck all. All these memories that we're sharing right now mean fuck all. And all I could see was my mother. And then when they put the adrenaline in me, thank God, mate, that was it. Like it got me back up. And I'll never forget when um, they lied me on the side of the table. My neck was still open. They said, you're calm, you're not gonna die but we have to call in a specialist from Larnaca. This geezer's walked in like the fucking, the fox in Pulp Fiction. What a guy, what a guy, he's gone. He's gone, my friend, do you do sport? I said, what fucking random question this is? I've just been chived up, mate. I said, why? I said, yeah, I played football. He went, that's why you're alive. Because your respiratory system was higher than the average man. Because I didn't smoke or nothing at the time. And he went, you could, your oxygen, your oxygen intake kept you alive. Because if you smoked or your lungs was weak, you would have just went, <laughs> panicked, gone into shock and died. And he said to me also, my friend, God must want you here. Why? He goes, your artery is a millimeter away. James, look how close that is, mate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I, he says, another millimeter? He said, my friend, <laughs> finished. Eight months later, one million records sold. God, 
I think God done it to teach me a lesson. What were you thinking? What was the plan? Were you going to quit after you got out of hospital? Were you thinking, or did that give you the keys? You look at all the rappers and stuff in America, 50 Cent, yeah. you gave them, they've all been shot, even Pro Green, yeah. ripped in his Pro. neck. Yeah, and yeah. They kind of, I think, there's only a very small percentage that will go, right, fuck this man, I need to give life everything. Mm-hmm. Do you think that made you kick on in life? Or did it make you take a step back and analyse everything at the start? It made me kick on. But also, again, I went through three emotions. So the first emotion, when I get back, which people are scared to admit, I was scared. Because everything's a joke until it becomes fucking real. And it happens to you. Mm-hmm. It's all good talking about war stories and gangster shit to make yourself sound cool until you actually get stabbed or shot. And now I've been stabbed. I'm there, I've experienced it now. So the first emotion was fear. Didn't want to go out. I remember I've, my dad's found out about this. My dad's turned up at the airport. I can't even stress the phone calls that was made. Do you know what I mean? Revenge. The, oh, the guys, yeah, that was involved. They know the calls that's been made. Do you understand? They know, because my dad ain't going to let that lie. No fucking chance Were in Were you hell. speaking with your dad at that time? Yeah, my dad, my dad. Was your manager? Yeah, not even at the time, but my dad, when my dad heard, my dad turned up at the airport when I landed. So imagine this, it's my dad and his wife, my mum and my stepfather who have never stood in the same vicinity. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. and my dad, I got to Gatwick and I got off the plane with DJ Master Steps, big garage DJ. Mm-hmm. And I remember Master Steps, like he was brilliant, my dad at the airport, what do you see me? He was like, cause I had a neck brace on. And I they, they had to put me on the fucking carts, you know, in, in the airport. Cause I was weak, I was so weak. But Step said, Master Step said, I'll stay with him on the plane till he lands. Mums do what they do. Cry. Cry. When she see my face. How was that for you seeing your Horrible. Crying? Horrible, bro. Hot, like, she'd see me and she'd see my face. She's like, what have they done to my boy's face? Like, what the fuck? All this cause of music and jealousy. And the thing is, I'm love James. In my area, I've, I don't, have that tension. People know me, I'm a people's person. I just, I just love life. And then we let my mum come up to me, she was by, you know, crying. And then my dad walked up to me. And I'm thinking, you've just driven, driven 30 miles to Gatwick Airport. And my dad said to me, he walked up to me, and I'll never forget it. Sweat, one sweat rolled down his face. And he went to me, Junior, go home and rest. And he went, I'm gonna call you in two days. Yeah? And, he, and all he wanted to do was look up my neck. And he went like this and he undone the neck brace and he went, and he went, cool, no problem. There was a few people that was affiliated that knew the boys from around here. They seen my dad in Battersea four days later, pulling up at people's shops. Someone says, we ain't seen Mike Harvey in Battersea for years. If you see him in Battersea, just know it's a fucking problem. His son's been stabbed. He done what he had to do. My dad just said to me, look, you know, just go away, go and relax. You know, here's a bit of dough, I'll deal with it. And it was horrible, like it was, it was a horrible emotion, James, man. A, a, a terrible emotion, like it's affected. So when I came out, when, once I recovered, you know, so solid, we just got bigger and bigger. So first it's paranoia. Then I used to have the ones where I used to stand in raves. And I, I wouldn't stand, I wouldn't let anyone stand behind me. So I'd usually be in raves like, why the fuck are you standing behind me? I'd, I'd always want to kick off with people. And then you get to the third stage. We just don't give a fuck. It is what it is, isn't it? I don't give a, I don't fear no one, James. I don't give, give a shit what gang you're from. I'm not in no gang, but I will fight to defend my rights to the day that I die. So then, then it's now I don't fear nothing. Come on then, let's go. Because by the, after four fucking years of So Solid, do you think I ain't seen guns? Do you think I ain't seen knives? Not by choice, James. Because I was a sensible one in So Solid. I was the one that said to the boys, don't go there. Don't go there. Because every time we got to go to certain places, some of the boys got to put on a vest, James. Because the threats were real. This ain't no internet shit. Oh, you, wait, you, yeah, I'm going to yeah. get you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get you. It's none of that yeah. fucking bollocks, James. Mm-hmm. This is real shit. And what it is, even if I'm not a gangster or I'm not the baddest one, is it affiliation by association or association by which, 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 yeah. whichever way? So do you know how many times me and Romeo got targeted just because... I mean, so solid. Because they think, if we can't get Mega or we can't get Mac, we're going to go for the other ones, aren't we? That's why I got targeted. Romeo got targeted. Lisa got targeted. So that's why more time when you'd book so solid, you'd book two of us, but just know 60 of us are turning up. Do you think after I got stabbed, my dad was letting me leave home without any of the goons? Had goons with me everywhere I went. That's how it rolled. 
what happens now? We employ the old gangsters to watch my back. Sorry, we don't employ them. They're my dad's people. They do it for the love. And then we, that's the way I had to go to work for four years. Mm. And how was that stress then? Horrible. Because what it is, I've got a role with real bad boys, real shooters, mm -hmm. yeah? Just so I can go to work. That's what's the so solid journey. But when it all changed was when I got offered to present on T4. Yeah. And I became Harvey, the celebrity. It just all changed. How was it though to make the transition to being in the four years or so solid, but murders, attempt murders, guns. Yeah. Even Ash, did he get done with a gun? Ash got 18 done. months. Yeah. He's kicked on, phenomenal actor. Brilliant. Mega, how did he, how did, was he a creative genius then to, to, genius. to get that? So even though your football career was kind of fizzling. Yeah. He still pulled you out of that misery. That's right. Obviously you've went through a lot of dark times and trauma, but there's no people, many people still in the industry because you're still doing what you do. Bro. In your 40s. So how did he have that vision? Did you just believe in his vision? Meg, if you or were you just thinking? At first, at the time, because me and him are closer than we've ever been. I didn't like his character at the time. But now I get it. Because when you got to carry that kind of easy e Suge Knight, P. Diddy, Jay-Z type of aura, yeah. you've got to be a certain way. If you're calling yourself the head man, you've got to deal with what comes with it. Because someone always wants to knock you off your fucking pedestal, yeah. didn't they? So Mega was, but where Mega was a genius, he went, Harvey, Romeo, Ashley Waters, Lisa Mafia, that's my England stars. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to launch them on 21 seconds, knowing that they're all going to get offered solo deals. So what I'll do, I'll sign them all to So Solid Recordings. He gets 20% of that, don't yeah. he? Harvey, Harvey then goes and signs to Universal. For tw I'll sign for 250,000. Romeo signs for 300,000. Lisa signs for 250. Asha signs for 300. Poor bastard goes jail. <laughs> yeah. Did they lose his contract? Poor, yeah. No, they stuck by him. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? Not mm -hmm. bad guy in jail with 300 grand yeah. in, the, in the thing. So what you got to think to yourself? He's now shot us all out. 20% of each person. You do the math. Yeah. That's a fucking over genius. Bags, yeah. yeah. That's a genius. Mm -hmm. But then obviously me and Mega had a big fallout. Ain't a mystery to no one. And I was the, I was the first one to leave. Um, like I said, he got sent to jail for like the attempted murder. Ash, Ash has gone jail. Obviously, you know, Morgan, our boy is doing life now. Yeah. I went to see him for the first time. How was he? Four years ago. He's doing very well. And it broke my fucking heart, James. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the first time I've seen him in 13 years. Why was that? Did you fall out beforehand? Because when I left so solid, I detached myself from everything. And I think when I got T4, I realized that when you're on a TV contract, you know, I got to thank Alicia. She made me move to Hertfordshire. Not hearing sirens no more. Waking up in a beautiful countryside. I got myself a half a million pound house. Realise that life's a bigger picture. Waking up in fear of your life every day. It's not fun. I stopped enjoying it. Me and the boys fell out. We didn't talk for four years. So I had to make that decision because by the time it got to the second album, people were more concerned about protecting their lives than actually making music. You know what I mean? What are we going to do? You know, we got money. So let's buy, buy more buy more ammo. No, <laughs> that's not, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not a fucking gangster and I don't fake to be one. Do you know what I mean? I live by basic morals, bro. Loyalty and being an honest person and to defend myself if attacked. That's how, that's the way I live life. But no, James, I said, I said no. And, and, I, and I left and me and Meg had a big fallout. And within that fallout, within that time, he went jail. So he had to learn a lot about his downfalls and about his, what he's done. Because um, all of us in So Solid have contributed to parts of our downfall. If the boys can't admit that, then they're all fucking lying to yeah, themselves. They're the point fingers. They're they point one finger, three points back. Yeah. So, yeah. so I understand it. Me and Meg are so close now, bro. Do you know what I mean? We're so close. We spoke today. Yeah. It's like, you're doing James English. Like, oh, yeah. Meg was like, I love his podcast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because all the boys watch you. So it, it was a journey, but I needed to, to detach myself. And I do thank Alicia Dixon, my ex-wife at the time, because she made me see a bigger picture. You're not going, I'm not worrying about my husband being killed. You were only young. What is the Jews meet? 21? Fucking hell, 21. She was in the peak of it. When were you married? 26. And that lasted fucking eight months. <laughs> <laughs> More of your story. Yeah. Don't get fucking married. Yeah. Yeah. But um, how was that as well? Because her career kicked on. 
Did you feel as if your career was in a decline, Wales, because you were the fucking love rat and that must be difficult, boy from the streets. You know the those red fucking those red they, headlines they, destroy they your life. Let the press kill people. Yeah. And you being the player and the bad boy and you and Romeo doing what he's doing. How was that when it came out? Did her the girl you is it your daughter's mum? So yeah, so, so Javine, because she was another famous singer. So was it her ex-man that seen your car outside her house? And you know what? Yeah, I he stuck you in. Yes, yeah, so I got a fucking snatch to be I don't know. Fucking so imagine this, right? It's the biggest bullshit ever. That story, uh-huh. right? So the, the the her boyfriend at the time was a producer called KG. Produces for all Saints, all like all Saints. He's an absolute bellend. You know what I mean? Like the geezer, and like what it was, um, someone. It was actually someone in her management told him. Do you know what I mean? But do you know what's weird, James? I wasn't even shagging her at the time. I was literally just after, we was doing a musical together. So after that, I'd just go to her house just to eat food. Still wrong, because I shouldn't be in another woman's, yeah, woman's people house. People were watching this thinking, you're lying <laughs> bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, gospel truth. Yeah. At that time when he apparently seen my car, uh-huh. I wasn't even shagging her. Real, real shit, obviously I did start was shagging he, her. Was he seeing her though? I was a, an ex by then. Do you know what's weird? When I was, at the time, this was, when I was speaking to her, she was like, uh, I've left him but he won't take no for an answer that's what she was doing. I can't me. believe he stuck you in and yeah. he, he told Alicia then, yeah so he went and told because what it was he knew someone that was affiliated to her because what it was the day that I left Javine's house this is weird imagine this I've left her house I'm driving home to my marital home and as I'm two miles from her house Javine's rang me and gone she knows she knows as I pulled up on my drive mate the worst thing I've ever had to do is tell a woman that I'm cheating on her. And I'll never forget what she done. I just bought her a dog. Imagine that. What kind? Fucking hell. Um, lab, a lab. Sorry, it was a Labrador. Lab. Yeah. And then um, I've walked in the front room and she's going, do you want some food, Harvey? Thinking, Fucking hell. Yeah. Of course I will. <laughs> Sit down, Harv. How was your day? Yeah, fine. I swear to God, James. Guess what program was on the TV? Tyra Banks show, right, at the time, because it was, what, 2005? Yeah. Guess what Tyra Banks show was about? Cheating. <laughs> did she put that on purposely? I swear. And then she went, this is exactly what she did. She went, she was there watching the TV. You enjoying your food? Yeah, yeah. Pause. My heart sank. She went, how long's it been going on, Harvey? And I went, and that was it, mate. I thought she was going to fucking kill me, mate. I thought she was going to absolutely... Like, it was the worst, to this day, it's the worst two days I've ever spent in my house. Then my mum rang me. You fucking stay in the house, you dirty tramp. You've, you've just broke your wife's heart, yeah? You owe her that. You owe her that. So I'm like, <laughs> as well as my agent calling me. I'm in every fucking newspaper now. It's come out in the papers. Now everyone hates me. Love rap. Yeah, love rap. <laughs> my mental health's like, oh my God. So not everywhere I go, it's just, I've gone from being in a celebrity relationship to mm. being loved, to being hated within 48 hours. Yeah. Self-inflicted. But you were a power couple, man, for exactly. people from the streets as well. Two young kids who are doing thriving high in life, getting quarter million pound deals yeah. and, and working hard at it. How, being a young, did you see yourself and your dad at that time? Yeah, and I started, this is so fucking weird. James, you're good. <laughs> okay. You're good. I'm so a big support of you. When I went through the, like, the madness of it, after I went through the Alicia stuff, and then obviously when I got with Javine, the mother of my, my, my daughter, um, should never have been with her. You know what I mean? Toxic relationship. And once I, once I escaped from it, and I got out of the whole situation, I said to my mum one time, like, mum, I feel like my dad. My mum said to me, don't you ever say that. And I said, why is that? She goes, there's a, di- she goes, there's a difference between you and your dad. And I went, what's that? She went, you got a conscience, he hasn't. And that was it. Yeah. She goes, you never do that. Mm-hmm. She goes, people don't understand. This is why, James, my wife, my wife now, the best woman, my best friend, the saviour of my life. She said to me, what did people expect from you? You was 21 years old. 21 to 20. She goes, I know what I was doing at fucking 21 to 25 years old. Mm-hmm. So a lot of pressure. The money that you're earning. Women throwing themselves at you. And it's only now I thought to myself, why the fuck did I get into a relationship at that age? Why did you? I don't, because, you know what it is, James? I'm old school. And I love love. I love being in love. I love the family unit. But I should have learned more about myself and I should have got 
the shagging out my sister. Yeah. <laughs> I've stolen a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but when, you're, when, you're, when you're in entertainment, it speeds up the process, doesn't it? <laughs> it must be difficult because you're trying to grow up fast. You're trying to mature to look good yeah. for the cameras. Yes. Because I read somewhere that Alicia, when your, is it your grandfather passed, you actually showed up. My stepfather. That just shows you how strong a character she is because that girl broke that woman. But instead, she's used that pain and thrived on it. Yeah. I think she won like, um, Strictly come dancing. Strictly come dancing, presenting yeah. Britain's Got Talent, mega shows. So yeah. And um, you are you're are not to blame for it, but you were the reason probably because that's a case of a lot of characters have been broken that she's done, fuck this, and shoot right for stars to keep proving you wrong because no doubt she'll probably still love you to this day. James, the fucking, this guy's so on point, you know. So I was saying that, um, yeah, four years ago, my stepfather died. And um, like I said, she, she comes to my mother's to pay her respects with her partner. That's unbelievable, man. Isn't that unbelievable? That's unbelievable. And I've, I've, I've said it, I've said it, why well, respect it? When my stepfather died, the whole of South London, Battersea was in my mum's house. My mum knows all the bad boys. She's a youth worker. So is he. So they are very com connected with the community. Mm. So when you pulled up outside my mum's, all the goons are outside my mum's. Everyone. That's how much he was loved. She's pulled up with her Aston Martin, with her partner, and the he must have been shutting himself. <laughs> if you want to come into my world, yeah, it's up to you, isn't it? He must have been shutting that's himself. Like, that's what I love with people. In So Solid, right? People always go like, but that's why people always take set on me and Romeo, mm. you know, like pricks, cunts. They think they're this. I mean, but he's are, to be fair. Cheers, James. He's are, <laughs> you but he's are, mate. And, Do we're like, I mean? and we're like, and when people know me and Romeo, yeah, we're the most down to earth geezers you'd meet. But what what is? You look at us and you see we're the mixed race ones, you know, mm. the ones that you'd call the pretty boys. But why we laugh, our friends behind us are the most dangerous set of people you would ever know. Romeo's set of friends, yeah? You don't want that problem. And he's the most humble guy you'd ever meet. But when Alicia turned up with her partner and the boys, said to the boys, look after him, show him love. And the boys was like, half, 100%, because... She's here for Ray. And that within itself is respect. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? She then sent sent 500 pounds worth of flowers to my mother to put on his, the funeral, the car, the funeral car. She then rang me. Imagine if she rang me six months before I met, met my wife. And she said to me, I just want you to be happy of. I apologized to her about what happened in the past. Me and I had a mature conversation. We both talked about our kids. Oh, I said to her, your kids are beautiful. She's like, your kids are beautiful. And she always said, oh, you know, you were the first person that I loved. And I said, good luck to you. And she said, good luck to me. And I now know, I now know that if she goes on my Instagram and sees me like happy with my kids and my yeah. wife, she'll be so proud. Yeah. She'd, she'd be like, I'm just so glad that he's okay. Yeah, that must have been difficult though then because then you realise, fuck me, man, like how much it has a ripple effect of fucking people about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so definitely. Some people it breaks them, push them over the edge, suicide, or some people it makes them. Yeah. She's obviously used that and, and it's made her, but no doubt she'll still be in your thoughts every day. Like, you know yourself, there's always girls in that come in and out of your life and you you still think about them, you think, I hope they're okay. The respect I've got for her, I said, to, like, the respect I got for her up until this day, like, I said, this is mad. The two women I actually made children with before my children with my wife, I never loved. I've loved two women in my life, James, Alicia and my wife now. How was it when she when you seen her? Was it hard for you? Is that when you realised? No, because we bumped into each other at events. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't mean as death. Yeah, it was. I think what was mad was when she came to the back of my mum's garden, and me and her just sat at the back of the garden. But remember, I'm I'm grieving, James. Mm -hmm. And we spoke, and one of my mates who's grown up with me, who's grown up around her, was like, "Mate, this is fucking weird. It's almost like you two ain't left each other." Because it, was, still it was so normal to, yeah. to, to talk. It was so normal to to chat. But, but, you, but you're both massive parts in each other's yeah. lives. Yeah. We bought our first house together, James. Yeah. We, she made me grow, grow up as a man. How can I be bitter or hold any anger towards that? If you commit adultery, put your fucking hands up and be a man and take it on the chin. How, how can I sit here and justify cheating on my wife? Mm -hmm. People would be like, you mug. So... But Johnny you know is when we both look at it at the end of it, like when I look at her now with her, her husband, and she looks at me, I can look at her pictures and be like, she's so happy. And she could look at me and and I'm so happy. So we also gotta go, well, we led ourselves both to the promised land out of pain. Yeah. And fortunately, 
I'm sorry that had to be at someone's expense, but then you've got to think to yourself, the things I went through after that, you know, newspapers putting private investigators on me, the interrogation of my life, snaky friends, James. You know how much friends was doing snaky shit? That's when I realised friends are real snakes out here. That's why I can count my friends on my hands. Yeah, same. You know what I mean? You bastards, man. You know what I mean? The, fr the people that enjoyed my downfall. So when I fucking rose back, I thought it was a beautiful thing. How was that going through that transition when you were going through the presenting job? Did you get a psychologist, Princess Diana, psychologist? Yeah. Why was that? They got it, Channel 4. And how was that feeling? Amazing. Opening up? Yeah, because... Being vulnerable. It what made age me, were you? I was... Before the breakup or after it? After it. No, no sorry, no, sorry. Before the breakup. Mm -hmm. So I was about 24. So still young? Yeah, still young. But he just took... What it is, James, this is what a lot of people do. And I could, I could see it even watching your podcast. People may come in here and they think they've got to portray an image. I'm fucking comfortable in my skin. I know who I am. I don't give a fuck what people think of me because I know who I am. But what it was, it was being comfortable. And he was trying to get out to me that when you go on national TV, you have to reach out to the masses. You cannot be like you're from the streets because all you're doing, you're segregating an audience. This is T4. You have to know how to laugh at yourself. You know, you have to know to be an open person mm -hmm. and actually when I first walked in there what was my body language like all closed off yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah man because if I act if people see me laughing or acting corny it's weakness it's weakness but I'm thinking to myself like one of my boys said to me Harvey do you know how much man you've dealt with in the ends bro they can see you laughing for 10 years being a clown people know the truth my friend was like go out there and go and earn your money yeah and do it the correct way and don't worry about the fucking streets. You don't owe the streets shit. And that was it. Once I learned that, that's why I always tell the young, the young kids now, when I see them in the hoods, stop. When you look, keep going, my postcode, I'm representing this. I'm representing that gang. You don't represent shit, bro. Your mum pays council tax for the estate that you live in. There's no loyalty on it. A lot of our parents came here as immigrants. So what exactly are you representing? The council. The fucking council. Postcodes, now postcode wars. I said, when these young boys have understanding of what they've been fighting for and losing lives for when they're older, that's if they make it to getting older, they're gonna feel like a fucking bunch of idiots. When I grown up, where I grown up, James, it was real. There was no postcode wars, it was just straight, Clapham Junction is Junction boys. Tottenham is Tottenham boys. Hackney is Hackney man. Brixton is the 28s. That was it. Manchester, Moss side. Birmingham, Burger Bars, Johnson's. Huddersfield, HUD, man. Now, I can't keep up. There's 30 gangs to each fucking area, all under codes and numbers. I'm like, we officially, now I feel like this is probably the closest that England's been to living, being like at LA and New York back in the day. Yeah, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Yeah. Like Americans, my friends in America ring me like, why are you not so stab happy? Mm-hmm. My friend said to me from America, who lives, who's from Compton said, man, I'm not coming to England. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, fuck that. <laughs> All you lot do is stab each other. I said, mm -hmm. how ironic. Mm -hmm. Look at I, said, that. I, said, I, said, I said, how ironic, because in America, I just thought that you lot just fucking, yeah. drive, yeah. drive by as a culture mm -hmm. in America. So yeah, man, it, like. I think New York, that's changed. I think the old mayor of New York's totally cleaned it up. 100%. And then LA, I think they're really trying to make moves. I think it's just here that, the government are happy for people here to stab each other and De shoot yeah, each other. Yeah, definitely. That's the fucking problem. Yeah, like people need to waking up and realise, work within, people's got greatness in them. So you, being from So Solid Crew, set the blueprint in 20 years deep. Yeah. He's are still successful. I know, it's that, crazy, so right? So that is the key. Why did they do it? Everything's model image. I copy the best out there. Yeah. I'll, I'll copy what they've got, put my own spin to it, and then I'll overtake them. Yeah. And then people start copying me. That's right. My techniques. That's right. And that's, that's good. I'll help anybody. But as soon as you fuck me over, I'll pull the plug in you. Will, Simple as your that. Your energy will go. Trust me, so James. It's difficult. So when you start to get through all that, all the, like the pain and starting to realise, okay, you're 26, going through a divorce all over the headlines. How was that affecting your, men, your mindset? Not good. And that's when I knew I was, I was strong because no TV channel would really touch me at the time. Did you get blackballed? Yeah, I got blackballed by the BBC. Um, I got blackballed, blackballed by music companies too. Why though? But we, that, that was weird. And to this day, I goes, my mum was like, they're blackballing my son out of his private life. You know, BBC, I can understand because Alicia was contracted to the BBC. Yeah. I get that. That You know what I mean? She, you know, 
she went on to you know present Strictly Come Dancing but people just had it in for me James like I did, like no one would touch me and then um, I was I remember like money was running out and I was in a bad way and I said what the fuck am I going to do man like I'm sitting at home racking my brain like I just put on a comedy show so imagine I'm watching um, Def Comedy Jam in America and I thought do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to pay for one of the top American comedians to come over Willie Robo at the time and I'm going to get Paul Chowdhury the Asian comedian mm -hmm. Ko and Kojo and I'm going to put on a comedy show. And because I've done a musical, I was in there with Cameron McIntosh. He's a producer of Mamma Mia. Now he loved me. That's the kind of power I had. I could go to these type of people. I said, Cameron, can I do a, uh, Cameron and Robert McIntosh, can I do a comedy show in the West End at a West End theatre? But I'm going to do it like Deaf Comedy Jam. They gave me the Shaftesbury Theatre. And I'm, James, money's running out really bad now. No one's touching me. And I swear to God, I think I had about Seven grand left. For how, from how much? Two fifty, half a mil? 300,000. Yeah. What were you doing? Were you still being daft and just... Tax man came for me. The divorce killed me because I had to admit to adultery. So you've got to think of the shared cars. <laughs> uh, um, by the way, what's she done? Yeah, I've got a rate of free. Yeah, she's like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know the equity in the house? Yeah. She just let it build up. So by the time... I've got to respect Alicia, yeah, because she went... Take you take what the fuck's yours. I'll take what's mine. And these are big boy lawyers involved. Mm -hmm. Russell's my lawyer, yeah. Stafford and Guild. These are big. And that's a few quid in itself. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And then my lawyer's gone to me. Legend, great. I got great lawyer. And he's gone. Listen, you got equity in the house, but there's so many debts that are built up because the case has gone on for so long. That's gonna go back. The money's just gonna come to me and go straight to the debts. But he goes, the debts are like I don't know. You've got about fifty thousand pounds worth of debts on you. So I said, what do I get at the end of it then? He went, maybe a Coke and, <laughs> and a chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, so out of the like, I don't know, the say 50 bags, I think I had 200 quid left. Fuck's <laughs> sake. I went, Footlock, I've got a pair of Air Max, that's all I could have Where did the dog go? Say again? Where did the dog go? The Labrador, did she keep the oh, dog? Oh, she kept it, yeah, yeah she kept yeah, it. Yeah. Of course she kept it, yeah. I ain't getting that back. Yeah. So, but what made me laugh, so what I done, I had about seven grand left. And I was like, I've got this, make this hit. And then I, I knew a woman at MTV, Jasmine Dottiwala. Imagine she's friends with Alicia, but she knows me too. So when I've gone to present the idea to her at MTV, she's got an attitude. Me and I had an argument in the MTV boardroom. Gospel truth, someone said, I'll never forget that argument. They've got glass rooms at MTV. And all they can see is me and Jasmine going, fuck. Mm -hmm. But I'm basically saying to her, fuck you. Like, just, you know Alicia. I goes, are you her best friend? Have I ever seen you in my house? Have I ever seen you at christenings? So what, you wanna give it all this, this attitude when I'm coming to present an idea to you that's gonna make you fucking money? She sat back. Two days later, she went, I'm gonna commission the show. Oh man, fuck, fuck for that. Yeah. Yeah. We've commissioned it. I made 32 grand from the show. After all my outgoings and paying, considering the fucking comedian missed two flights to cunt. <laughs> Cause he's, he's a rock and roll comedian yeah, to the point so now. So he's bang on up. Yeah, but when he landed, the boys had to have a word with him. Cause my team, the boys was like, do you think this is a joke, mate? This is someone's money. He just kept missing flights, mate. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But he, anyway, he put on a good show. So I made, yeah, I made about 35 grand. Compared to 250s yeah. and 300s you were making. Did you feel as if your career was going on decline oh, then? My, my, I, was thinking, I was looking at myself like, okay, so I'm walking in my house, right? And I've got 5 million records sold. I've got all my plaques up in my house and I've got fuck all to show for it. What if I failed. What a failure. That's what most musicians do. James, I could tell you a lot of musicians that you're watching currently now and they're putting on all this image, you know, all the, doing all this shit, yeah, yeah. doing all that shit. They ain't got a pot to piss in. I know, I know every artist's fees that you watch, what they go out for. Remember, they have to give 40% of that money to the tax man. It's mm. The whole game and everything that is perceived to the kids and the things that the kids think they got to follow on the internet is the biggest smokescreen and load of bollocks you would ever watch. Now kids think you've got to have a big boy watch on and change just to be the man. No, yeah. go and invest your fucking money. Be sensible. Mm -hmm. But um, from there was when I started to get back on my feet and there was there was, there was was loads of trials and tribulations along the way. Obviously my, my career is colourful. It didn't just go perfect. <laughs> it didn't just go. I think it, that's why you're so good to interview me because yeah. it's a fucking roller coaster. It's a fucking roller coaster, mate. <laughs> I've just got my seatbelt on, I man. Know. Just enjoying the journey. So, I'm like, <laughs> but that was, the, that was like, from the Alicia situation, yeah. that was the rebuild. Did you never try and resolve that? 
Nah, because I'm, that just shows you kind of character I she has, man. Fair play as yeah, well. Like. And I, I can't go back, yeah. This is how fucked up I am, and that's what my, my missus says now. She goes, "This is why I respect you so much, yeah." People are fooled by beauty, and oh, but you look, look beautiful together. Or I don't care if you're beautiful. Connection. Connection, and number one, because my mom said to her, like, "You you didn't fight for your marriage. You allowed my son just to walk off." Do you know what I mean? But then I said to my mom. I can never rectify that because I'm going to be thinking she's going to make it one all. Mm -hmm. And now she's going to go fucking shag another geezer yeah, so and I wouldn't be able to handle that. Yeah, you're paranoid. So you I'm going to be like, if she makes it one all, what can I say? You fucked him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you done that. Yeah. Then the house is like, you, yeah. yeah. And it just gets more demonic. Toxic. So I said to myself, Hov, you got to take the L geezer and you got to move on with your life. It's done. So I wouldn't go back if you paid me. Mm -hmm. What was the script, man? I will touch on that. I know you spoke about it before, but Halle Berry. Did she put it on you? <laughs> yeah, in um, the, <laughs> the, Dorchester, the Dor Dorchester Hotel. Oh, sick, Halle. Oh, yeah. Tell me it was before GoldenEye. Tell me it, it was. was I was interviewing her for GoldenEye. <laughs> <laughs> and that man is that we're so... fucked up, man. Just, I, I just mad. No rain. wonder people fell out with you, mate. Oh, well, <laughs> fuck that. Do you know what now? People on the podcast are going to be like, wanker, they're going to hate me even more. I'm like, fuck you, know, I can't Did win. Did she put it on you, yeah? Yeah, stuck it on me proper, man. That was mad. And just mad. I'd always laugh because everyone's interviewing techniques when they interview me is everyone's different. And I knew, like, I know you because you, you proper do your research. Mm -hmm. But I said, I don't think there's one person interview a room walked in there like, I can't ask you, mate. Because who didn't fucking fancy Halle Berry? Yeah, she was you know stunned, I mean? still stunning. Yeah, but I was getting married that summer, James. Yeah. And people, are, this is what I've got to say about fame. So hold on a minute. My reality, she's in England. I'm interviewing her. So what am I meant to do in that moment when she stuck it on me? Go, no problem, love. I'll meet you tonight. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking would have. Fuck's sake. I'll meet you tonight, babe. <laughs> By the way, my wife's at home, but I'm so shaggy. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's mad. I remember looking at me, bro, 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 she's fucking beautiful, man. Jesus Christ, like, but I remember being like. But that shows that you do have morals and respect for- Of course. Like, things that I've done, listen, anything that I've committed in terms of like, any badness within the business or any badness to do with women, James, I fully know what I was doing. I don't need no one to, yeah. to um, smooth it out for me. Yeah, I'm a man, like I said, I hold up to my mistakes, but I am not a bad person. So anyone that, that's why I'm loved in my community because all they're my mum's friends, they're like, he's, they're, they're like, Junior's got a good heart, but yeah. um, it's impossible. And the thing is, I swear to God, that morning, she, Alicia was on to me anyway. She was on to me that morning when I went out to interview her. Cause she's- I don't, She must have always been wary though, man. How, yeah. Cause those were proper back in the day. Do you know what I mean? And you girls are worse than boys. Proper swagging. They fucking love the bad boys. So if you've got a shitty story, man, it just, they come on you even what, more. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I knew a girl was weird, yeah? And this is so weird. And I was laughing, laughing, yeah? And I went, I'll never forget it, right? I, um, in my bad days, like I had a sexual relation with this girl. And I woke up in the morning and she was rubbing my scar on my neck. And I was like, you fucking twisted woman. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, it's so sexy where you got stabbed. And I was like, Oh, bore off. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, bore off. Is this what it, is this what it takes mm -hmm. for me? <laughs> like, but you, you know, women, they, the more, like you said, uh, they loved it. And uh, you know, you get, there's two types of girls in it. There's good women and there's girls that love that, love that lifestyle. And when we was in Soul Solid, the girls used to love being around us, didn't they? The jewelry, the drama, yeah. the cars, the crazy nights in the hotel, living, living, living a life that they would never have. You know what I mean? We're putting these, these girls are traveling with us and they're, they're coming in fucking Escalades when we're in America. We've got penthouses in Miami. You know, girls are flying over to, over to meet us. We're rolling with Tim Westwood, DJ Khaled. They mm. love all that shit, don't they? They yeah. love the bright lights, yeah. the fast it's cars. Fake as fuck, but I, for me, that's not it's a turn on shit. for me anymore. It's fake as shit. I see them as weak. Yeah. All that. I just can't stand girls like I, that. It's all about connection, man, and mentally. And like, somebody's can't. got to understand like. I come with fucking baggage as well, as mm. including yourself. So it's got to be somebody that comes and accepts all your bullshit, man. Yeah. Willing to unpack it, all your shit Correct, on them. James. Do you know what I mean? So Correct. it can be difficult. When you were going through your dark time, did anybody from So Solid reach out? At, do you know what? At the time, I said, me and Romeo, close forever. So I say, me, me, Romeo, and Trino and Ashley were very close. Me and Ashley ain't close no more. Why is that? 
Ashley's changed his life. He's been through a lot of tough shit, just like me. And since he's got back on his feet, he chose his path. So, you know, me and him was in IB for a couple of years ago, but he just chose to detach himself. And I find it, considering what me and him, me and him have been through everything, and me and him have stuck together. He'll know what I'm talking about when he watches this. Do you understand? But he has his reasons. James, I love the boy. We've shared a journey together, but he feels he has to detach himself. I'm not going to run after him. Can you understand that though with the shit that you've been through? Maybe he doesn't want to jeopardize I can understand it, but, anything. But not with me. Not your loyalty. Because just, yeah. I'm the one that, I was the one to show so people in So Solid that example. I detached myself from everyone, but I didn't detach myself from Romeo because Romeo wasn't living like that. He was on the same path as me. Just wanted to live a good life, get his house and keep away from the drama. So everyone knows me, like I'm the most anti-drama guy that you would meet. I live in the fucking countryside now. I'm out in the, with my kids going to fucking feeding the fish. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? And walking the dog. Mm -hmm. I'd like, I just live a very, very peaceful life. I'm not into all that shit. So I understand it, but to like treat me like it, nah, I don't get that. I sent him a message during the first lockdown. He knows the message I sent him. I said, you go your way, I go mine, but I'm forever proud of you. That's it. So there's a mutual respect there. 100% yeah, mutual respect. Did they respect. reply? Nah, he didn't reply. But I'm, I'm, being in zone, I was with him four weeks before at the So Solid concert that we put on just before the first lockdown, which he turns up, but never performed. Now, you, well, there you go. Now you know why. Now, mm. now you, so, so I don't understand why you turned up. Still probably still want to be part of it and probably still mess up. It was bizarre. So when I've actually said to Asher at the time, yo, Ash, because it was me and Mega's show, I said, yo, your, your clothes are with the stylist upstairs. And he looked at me and went, I'm not performing. I went, so I just looked at him and went, okay, no problem. Because we're older now, we're fathers, you know what I mean? We're not going to fucking scrap at our age. But I'm saying is that it's best that we just don't cross that line. Because if I don't agree with what you're saying, I'm going to tell you. And Ash is the same. So, but I still Sky Plus Bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, phenomenal career. For I'm so proud of it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro, it, it's almost like only so solid members can talk about so solid members. No fucking outsiders can talk about mm. Ash. You can't come on the street and talk to me about Asher. You was you, there's a fucking problem. Yeah. He's my brother. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna do an interview and give out some fake information. Like, yeah, we're all great. There's no problem. No one's had an argument, James. Yeah. But not everyone's energies are made for each other. And I respect that. Mm -hmm. But could I say that, do I wish him the fucking best? I'm fucking extremely proud of him. That's my brother. I've shared so much shit with him. Sometimes in life, you've got to go your own separate yeah, ways. Yeah, sometimes, but you don't know what's around the corner. Maybe and you five know years, the corner. 10 years, 10 we'll, you can come back. Come on, see me and Ash, we love each other so much. Like, is I'm more pissed off with him that I've had your back, bro. And he knows what I'm talking about. You know that night in the hotel, what happened? When them boys ran down in our, run up in our hotel. You know what I did. They tried to kill you. Get me. They didn't try. They didn't try, but they, they, they came serious. Mm -hmm. But luckily me, cause I don't fear no man. Step forward. Yeah, I stepped forward. I ran down the fucking hotel lobby in my boxer shorts. Do you know what I mean? But sod's law, the, boy, the boys had ballys on. And I knew one of the boys and he took his belly off and he went, what the? And I went, what the fuck? How was it? I've had Lisa Mafia on here, I love the bits. How was it to, Lisa's to, wicked. To, to protect Lisa? Being from the band and all the shit he's going through as well. Did you feel like father figures for her? 100%. Yeah, because she's, she's a, solid, man. Solid woman, solid man. Solid fucking lover to bits. And obviously the stuff she's been through with her mum and yeah. she spoke about all this thing. Everybody's got different journeys. But how hard was it having the girl in the band? Protect Lisa by any means necessary. Yeah. She's a woman. Mm -hmm. And usually when you, you know that if you come to any of the boys, yeah, you better come proper because no one's going to back down. But then you might go for the girl because she's easy to go for. Nah, Lisa's extra protected. She yeah. was, that's why when you'd see Lisa out, she's got 30 guys with her. Is that real? We ain't letting anything happen to her. Yeah. And not just that. Lisa can fucking look after herself. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. But nothing but respect for her. Mm -hmm. Like, Le even with Lisa, Lisa's on her own journey. Do you know what I mean? So she's been through a lot personally. And I can see that Lisa's actually in a healing process. I noticed it from your interview. Yeah. 
Lisa's healing now. She's there. She's getting there. Yeah. You can see the and change. She's, and and she's like... Everything she's bottled up for years and years yeah, is coming to her and head. Yeah, and I can see it rising. Yeah, yeah. And when you see something like that, especially a girl that has been like assisted to me, do you know what you do? You leave her and you let her peacefully rebuild. Because if she's going onto the right path, just let her be. Because mm -hmm. me and Lisa don't need to say nothing to each other. We know what we've been through. Yeah. We, we all do. So if anyone want to go, it's so solid tight, of course we are. Always. Do we have our ways? Of course we do. Do we all agree with each other? No, we don't. But if you're looking for some dramatic story, like, yeah, we fought and that one's a fucker and that one done. You're not getting that from me, mate, because I would love them lot to the day that I die. How can I be bitter or anger to something that was a major part of my life that also changed my life, that allowed me to live in a nice house, that made me live out dreams? Never. I would yeah, never exactly, dis man. I would, you couldn't, man, I would never people, ever disrespect so yeah, solid would, on that level. Would watch and think you've got to have their back no matter never. what. Never people are always going to fall, especially being so many involved in it. So when you were going through all that, when you were starting to rise up again, what were you doing with your life then? What was that like when you were coming through the fucking bankruptcy and yeah. in your thirties? Were you thinking it was over or true Harvey style just fucking punching through again and, and rising to the top? No, because you see me, James, yeah. I love the rebuild. Yeah. I'm a fucking phoenix, bro. Mm -hmm. So do you know what? If you try and shut off every door for me, I'll find one. And I know my power. I know I will get you. And Please. I know something will happen. And then what I knew was that things started to build up. Things started to come back in. I started to do various TV work, the TV channels, because TV, like, we love his character, man. Come on, we mm. need fucking Harvey back, man. Jeez, like, it's ridiculous. TV, TV channels started to ease off of me. And then I knew it was going to happen. They offered me Big Brother. And the first time I said, no. Why? Because I was like, I'm not doing Big Brother because I'm stubborn. I'm mum. I'm not going on Big Brother. I said to my mother to prove to people that I'm a good person. <laughs> so, the pub, so the public now yeah. go, oh, he's really a nice guy because yeah. we've called him a cunt for the last three years. I was mm. like, fuck the public. If they hate me, then let them hate me then. Because no way. And then, um, then Romeo done it, didn't he? Six months later. And my, my agent was like, they've come back again. You got the thing now? Yeah, me. Yeah. And then I went, how much? And then he went, he said the fee. And I went, how much? Mm -hmm. I went, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's when it changed, James, because do you know when I knew I was doing well? I didn't know the day I got to the final, you don't, when you're in the house, you don't know. Because mm -hmm. they announced it to you that night. But I'm thinking, there's only six of us left. There's only, swear so six in the final. They then read, day before the final, they then sent us in, they sent us in letters from our mothers. And then they read they read a letter to me, Colleen Nolan from, you know, who does yeah, Loose Women. Women. So Colleen's read the letter to me. And I was like, why does Colleen have to read this letter? Cause she's like a fucking mother anyway, ain't she? Mm -hmm. And I love Colleen. She's like, Harvey. She goes, <laughs> and she talks like she's my mum. And I know my mum went, she said, son, keep doing well. I'm getting, she puts sublim, she goes, I'm getting a lot of love out here on these streets from people. Keep it up. And, I've, and I, didn't know what, I don't know what everyone's thinking at home. And when I came out of Big Brother and I went on my Twitter and I, my eyes was dizzy because the messages was, I had like 2000 messages, yeah? And I pressed, and I went scroll like this. And I went, how fake people are. Now everyone loves me. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel bad now for saying that about him. I didn't know he was like this. I didn't know he was like that. He carried himself properly. He was also respectful for when he talked about Alicia, blah, blah, blah. But you know my point, James, with no disrespect, why the fuck do I have to justify myself to you? I've always been this person. You're defining my whole life by a mistake. You're calling me a terrible person. But when I read comments back in the day, I used to be like, I oh, prick, fucking loves himself. I'm like, you really don't know me. How hard was that? Horrible. Because social media was just kind of popping off. Yeah, then. and they were brutal to me. They were brutal to me. What kind of threats, trolls, everything? Ch then it was just, that's baby food to me because you're just calling me a cheat. I'm used to getting death threats, bro. I'm used to hearing that gangster wants to- Yeah, proper ro real. Proper real threats, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So for it, it was more like, it was more of a mind fuck. Like, you know, like I said, being in at, you know, being at airports, people giving me dirty looks, fucking cheat. I've heard shouted out a few times. At the airport, got to Dubai, wasn't it? Yeah. So I'm just like, this is fucking crazy. And then watching like 
spending the time in an un unreal environment, Big Brother, for three weeks, and now you're telling me I'm a good person. When I went into Big Brother, girls screamed, because you still have the girls that mm -hmm. with you, and I could hear, boo. <laughs> and as you're walking towards Brian, <laughs> Brian's like, oh, we come here. And I could hear, boo. Yeah. I walked out, they're screaming. <laughs> I'm coming out. My agent's ringing me. Hello, want to do a photo shoot with you for 40 grand. This one wants you. That one wants you. I'm going, what? Now they want you and Martin Kemp, legend, to do Celebrity Wedding Planner. Next thing, the bank's just going, I've been on my fucking face for fucking yeah. four years. And that was it, James. Changed your life again. It just, it just, it just fucking, it just changed. But even no matter all your interviews and all your presenting, you always come across as a good guy. You always come, even mm. after this and stuff, we'll be friends. We'll be tight 100% James, I man. know that anyway. 100%. So you've got that persona and you've had your challenges. Much but I think that's James. where people love you. I think that's where people can relate. People, we all fucking make mistakes. You're, like, yeah, you're mate. a kid, man. Do yeah. what you're doing, getting money, fucking girls, man. Like, I'm still doing it. <laughs> Fair play to you. Seven fucking six. So I just want to, um, people make mistakes, man. Yeah. I'm single though. That's the only thing. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I'm, I'm too scared to get attached because I'm, I'm a lot, I, I love with everything. Yeah. So I'm scared that everything that I've built goes to fuck because yeah, my you. energy will go somewhere else. So just want to stay in the park. But fair play if you're building yourself Thank out. You. And when you started getting yourself out, did the people who had fucked you over at start start creeping in again or try to creep in? Did that make you more stronger to yeah. go, right, fuck it? But you see me, um, like anyone that knows me that you speak to, like, I don't trust people, bro. I'm very, same. I'm very ignorant. So yeah, same. like my friends, like people know me, like there's friends that still don't know where I live. Do you understand? But that's just the way I treat people. Is that because of the stabbing and stuff as just well? Just of bro? everything. Yeah. Just of everything. Yeah, everything I've been through. So solid created, I'm heightened my paranoia. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's not a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, it's a good thing. Because yeah. I, I say to my friend, yeah, being paranoid is a good thing, you know? Yeah, definitely. But um, I did, yeah, it was it, it was a lot. My mental state and and everything. And I had to change my life. But when I knew I could rebuild, James, was that, and get back to the, once I rebuilt and rebuilt, I said to myself, mate, if I can go through this, I can come back from anything. Because I've had women problems. I've had problems on the streets. I've had red top papers try and, like I said, um, demonize my character. Yeah. I've lost people. I've had friends being killed. I've lost family members. What the fuck more can you do to me apart from me die? And I'm not scared of that. Do you know what I mean? And I don't mean that in a way of like a war story type of way. I don't fear God. I don't fear death, James. Do you know what I mean? I've had a fucking great life and I will continue to be a good person and raise my kids and show my kids the right example. My children are not growing up how I grew up. My son and my daughters are not growing up in an environment to be stabbed. Obviously things can happen in life. It's the way it goes. It's gangsters everywhere. There's drama everywhere. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But if I've worked this hard to make them have a better life, why the fuck do I want them to walk down the same street, James? Yeah, exactly. Do you understand? Yeah. Why do I want them? My son will learn how to box. We come from a boxing family. You don't need to war on the street to prove to people that you can fight. Yeah. Talking about fighting, you've know done I mean? the MMA thing. Yeah. Shout out to my boy Dapper ah, last, mate. Ah, sorry, Dapper, mate. Ah, that's sorry, fucking Dax. hell. Yeah. Yeah, but anybody that gets into a fucking ring, Respect even to him. a boxing ring with a head guard on, yeah. is fucking terrifying. Respect to him. Never mind getting into an MMA ring. No, no head guard, no fuck all. There knees, kicks, a lot. There's massive respect for that. He came out swinging, man. He came out swinging. You use good friends beforehand. Yeah, I mean, how was that then, fighting him? It was bizarre because do you know what it's, it's weird because this is what I realized what he didn't, we, James, listen, no mystery. The fighting is what I do. Yeah. I ain't a gangster. Mm -hmm. I ain't a gunman. Yeah. But I will knock you out. Yeah. And I'm good at fighting. It's mm -hmm. one thing I've been good at, bro. You know what I mean? So when the, my boy seen that he took it, they was a bit like, oh, what's he done? What's, he, what's that doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, do you know Tama Hassan? Yeah. Tama went mm -hmm. on Dapper's page and said, no, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Tama went, what it is, people take my kindness for weakness and yet again, the mixed race thing. So mm -hmm. pe my, people that's actually seen me kick off and flip and- They're short. Yeah, I love a scrap. Mm -hmm. I love a fucking tear up. Do you feel so, as if you had to be faint because you had the charm, the good looks, yeah, constantly feel was, as if you had something to prove all the time? 100% because you see it when boys will be like, every time they say things about so solid, they would never say things about like mega on any street level or Mac, but it's always like Romeo and Harvey, like oh, I'd love to fucking weigh them two in or I'd love to, like this so I'm like no problem 
No problem. Let's see how let's see how that goes for you. Do you know what I mean? James, I've never stabbed anyone in my life. I've never shot no one. You understand what I'm saying? Everything I've done is done with these. I've given out hiding, hidings and I've also took them. I've had a gun once in my life. Once in my fucking life. And that was because of so solid paranoia. I told my father. Do you understand? My dad's friend, who I can't name, <laughs> who you would know. <laughs> yeah. Who does this, drove to my house. Yeah. Said, what are you fucking doing with this? You have a career. Yeah. Give me fucking back that. Quit me up in my house. I said, you don't fuck up your career. Do you understand? He goes, I wish I never used one of these, otherwise my life would be a lot more better. And took the gun off me, and that's the only time I've ever, ever, ever personally touched the firearms mm -hmm. in my whole life. Yeah. And even when it was around me with people that I know, I had no interest. I'm like, these things are dangerous, man. You, these, people, these things cause trauma to people's lives. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. I don't, yeah. Need, yeah. You, I don't think you could live with the pain of your heart of taking another man's life. No, I couldn't. The, the same as me. Like, the regret and the pain would be that. I interviewed somebody who's a, like, not a serial killer, but he's, he was heavily involved. And he says there's a few yeah. things to do when you kill someone. He says the first thing is killing them. He says that's the easy part. He says the second one is willing to be going to prison for the rest of your life. But he says the third one and the most important it's one with is it. living with it. <laughs> and he's like, ah, fuck people think because the majority of people who do murders or do any sort of crime they're always high as well they're either right. on drink or drugs that's right to go and do somebody cold blooded is a whole fucking different that's ball right. game majority of people can't handle that same as why do you think everybody in the army end up with PTSD, PTSD because as human beings we shouldn't be seeing violence but we're so ingrained from a young age to think that it's fucking normal and my security man yeah was in the army bless Paul Downward one of the best security men I've ever had and he turned out to be one of my um, good friends I seen trauma for what he's seen in the army just by spending time with him. Not when he's doing the job, just your effects. I'd be like, Paul, what the? And that's all from the army. Mm -hmm. Watching his sleeping pattern. Because in the army, he had to kill. Yeah. And watching him. I remember one time being in a hotel with him and he's literally falling asleep. And, he, and I said, what the? <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. but it's, you know what it is? It's the spirits and the devil and mm -hmm. it's all the things fucking with your mind. And I am not. Listen, the only way I am killing. Is if you trouble my fucking kids and wife, bro. Yeah. I got to defend my house by any means necessary. Do you understand? But for me to wake up in the morning and go, I'm going to go kill someone. I am not built for that shit, mate. It's not who I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd never put out that image. I'd never tell any kid to do that. But you know what? What's mad about it? As you know, James in So Solid and the things that you've seen yourself and the people that you've also had in this room. James, I've grown up around killers, bro. Real fucking... Killers. I'm from South London. <laughs> so even if yeah. you don't want to see these people, you go in to see them. Yeah. Not by choice, but it becomes a part of your environment. So if you live in the ghetto, you're going to see a drug dealer. You're going to see someone that has killed someone. Maybe they might not be here <laughs> further down the line because they're doing life. But this is my reality, James. Girls on the game. These are things that I've grown up around. I didn't go down that path, but every day I'm waking up in South London, these are the things that I'm exposed to. Does that make me bad? Does that make me a gangster? No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But that's my environment. What do you want me to do about it? My mum gave me enough sense and sensibility to handle myself on the streets. I'm streetwise, I'm not a prick, yeah? And I know fully what's going on out here. But did I want that? That to be my path of life? Is that what I wanted to show my kids? Oh yeah, your dad's got war stories and I was a gangster and I fucking mm. shot people. Yeah. Nah. Nah, we spoke earlier on that. I always nah, say not for me, mate. That's the weakest men, the ones who hold yeah. gun knives. Like, they're not vulnerable. For me. People war say, stories yeah. do nothing for me, James. Everybody's got them. Everybody's got pain and misery. But for me, it's the respect for the people who use that pain. We can't change the pain of the past, but what we can do is learn from it. And yeah. that's key to me that... Like, don't fucking point fingers. If you've got problems, sort them out yourself. Like, nobody's Correct. coming to chap your door and say, look, Harvey to give me your hand I'm going to save you not your brothers your sisters right. your mum your dad you need to fucking dig deep yourself 100% and, and you got out of that darkness what was your life like then were you happy did you enjoy it more because of all yeah. the fucked up shit that was involved in the last 15 years before it life was good man like you know what it is like I remember it like I remember like getting your your nice flat back again yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, getting your cars back yeah. but obviously when you go back into it you go back into it with a wiser head 
So you learn how to protect your money a lot more, invest your money, be sensible. You don't value, value the stupid things, materialistics. Do you know what I mean? You're more, obviously I've got a daughter, my first daughter at the time. But so is she 13 now? She's 13 now, my, my baba. So she's, um, that brought a different focus because now everything that I'm doing is for her. Mm -hmm. So that leveled me out. And then I got, um, the music started doing well again. The boys started, we started to reform again. We've done the reunion show. 2013. 2013, we healed all our riffs. It's nice to be back around the guys again. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's in a good space. Like Mega's in a good space. Lisa, Romeo, everyone's older, got kids. No one gives a shit about all that stuff no more. Mm -hmm. Like we're just like, we're just trying to help the young, the youngsters, you know, I, um, the people that I've got good relationship, relationships with, um, the Stormzies, um, the young uns just trying to pass on knowledge to them, like, yo, it's not worth it. Stay on the stay on the you know the good path mm -hmm. and you have a career and respect it. You have nothing to prove to the streets. All the streets are gonna do is just take you down a negative road. Yeah, it's not understand. Is killing it, man. He's he that, does his things for the streets, he's all, I know he does his stuff for the homeless and stuff exactly. like that, man. He's Stormzy is like you'd see Stormzy around here all the time because he's close with my cousin. Yeah. They're best friends. So they're always together. He's that normal. Keys is worth how much now? And you'd literally see Stormzy in Battersea Park just with his mates. Yeah. No, literally no chain on. You barely see a watch on him. Mm -hmm. He treated himself to a watch the other day. I said, fuck, you know, you bought something then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with your millions, you bought uh, something. But, but a sensible head knows that. Very that doesn't sensible. mean fuck all that, that, that you know yourself. Yeah. Great jewellery and you've got doing well. But it means you don't, fuck you all. You don't wake up in the morning coming in your pants because you've got certain Me things. Shit. But back in the day, that's what we probably craved. That's what I craved. I'd done a lot of bad shit to get that. Way. Yeah. Fucked it all through gambling. But I thought I was the man if oh, I had a nice watch. Did. Yeah. But when you get older and people like... I was in Dubai there and I had a nice watch on and somebody says, oh, you talk about materialistic stuff yeah. and you're sitting with a fucking certain type watch on. And I was like, ah, you can still have good things. I still like good things. Of course. Yeah, watches are investments as, as well. James, yeah, I yeah. love my watches, bro. <laughs> come on, come, like, yeah, come on, like. Yeah. But it was, this is what people don't know about me too. Probably like chains I wore 10 years ago. When the new, these new set of chains come out, I just like because I just mm. like chains, but you never ever see me talking about that shit. And the internet or doing stupid shit. I'm 41 years old. What guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. People think you're a fucking grown ass man <laughs> and you're a fucking father, you yeah, prick. Yeah. But what it was, James, people don't realise. I am a big watch lover. Mm -hmm. So I actually go to the festival in Switzerland. Like, I just love watches. It's an investment. Yeah, yeah I love it. It's so a fucking investment. I love the APs. Yeah. Um, I love the, um, back in the day when the Techno Marines, the Rollies. I'm actually generally, I know everything about watches. You know, I always go to people, you always get in the same corners of getting usual, the APs, the Audemars mm -hmm. and whatnot. But I just like, when I went to Switzerland and I realised how intricate the watch game is, yeah, I was like, yeah. I'd, love to, I'd love to make watches. And you realise how they hold value and the way they're built inside. Like, it's, it's like a fucking car. Mm -hmm. Because you think, how can you get something that goes in your wrist and is worth more than a house? <laughs> did you, Dan Toe, do you know Dan Toe? Yes, did you yes. Have a, did you have, who said this? Somebody had a, a, one of his watches on. Yes, I, but, yeah, not yeah, me though. But, but, yeah, but do you know Dan Toe? He's know got, because his product's serious, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, watches. He's serious. Yeah, he started out his own watches. Yes. His watches are fucking class, man. So I just like, I just, I generally just love watches. That's why I think when, the amount of drama in the gangster world that is caused over a watch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you know what, listen. Do you know how much footballers watches I've had to get back? I'm like, why do you wear it if you can't defend it? The film industry as well. I know you've done a few films and yeah. all that stuff. How did you get into acting? My first film. Because you've done plays as well. Yeah. Everything. It's What's, mad, isn't it? Yeah, you've done a lot of shit, man. Yeah. You've done so much. When well, you say a boy from South London from the streets has done yeah. a musical. Mm -hmm. you know? How was that, doing a musical? Wicked, James. What was that? I loved it. And do you know what? It's because I could write. I learned about writing music. Yeah. And I'm working with deep people like... Andrew Lloyd Webber's people and it was and the storyline was based on West Side Story so the singing and dancing you can gangs, understand why yeah. they got me because it was based on gangs yeah. do you know what I mean but it was amazing I got nominated for um, best support actor in the West End but obviously it's understandable why I didn't win because Patrick Swayze was in my character Kevin Spacey for um, Guys and Dolls um, I got the lowest votes but I was in the same I got it mm. on my wall Michael Harvey, Kevin Spacey, Patrick Swayze, and Eva Mendel from Wicked. I used to watch his Roadhouse like, and fucking yeah, oh, Dancing. Fuck he, sake, he man. Was, he was the man, so that was amazing. But the Steven Seagal film in 2003, Steven Seagal landed, and you're going to love, you're going to buzz mm. off this. So Steven Seagal lands in England. When he lands in England, 
he sees my single poster. So at the time of my single poster, I got lent the jacket that Blade wore, you know, Wesley Snipes. Yeah, yeah. So imagine they've sent me this jacket, but they gave it this come special box and the guys had to come with it. I can only wear it and they got to take it back. So I wore the waistcoat that Blade's, Blade wears yeah. in Blade One. So basically I got a single cover all around England of me like this, on like that. But I look like a movie star the way they've shot it. Mm -hmm. They've then seen my record label in the corner of the, the poster. So, so imagine my agent rang me and gone, they want, sorry, my dad's the, my, my manager at the time. They want you to go for a casting for a Steven Seagal film, Out for a Kill. So I've gone, yeah, good one. When's Jeremy Beadle going to come yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a prank. I've never had no, yeah. I've never acted, no acting experience in my life. So my dad's gone, they want you in tomorrow. I'm like, and do what? He's like, do an American accent. God's honor. I went home and listened to the first 50 Cent album. I don't know why I listened to that, because what the fuck's that got to do with acting? <laughs> Yeah, so I went in for the casting. Jeremy Zimmerman, this is the guy that changed my 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 life. And Jeremy Zimmerman behind casting for Batman, all the big films. He walked in there, and I'm like, "Fucking hell, this is proper. This is proper. This is isn't it." And he's gone in, and he's gone read these lines. I've absolutely blagged it, James. To me, it's the worst American accent at that time that I've ever done. I'm fake it until you make I'm it. I'm faking it, it mate. Uh, so I've left it. <laughs> Next thing I get home, my dad's gone. They've just sent you, sent an LOI, a letter of intent. That's what you get in movie world. That means they want you for the role. Mm -hmm. So, what? He says, yeah. But I said, dad, it's the MOBOs tomorrow. So it was the year after we won the MOBOs. I said, I've got to present an award. He said, they know that. Because literally after you present an award at the MOBOs, they're getting you a car to Biggin Hill and you're getting on a chartered flight to Bulgaria. <laughs> it's the most bizarre fucking thing, James, ever. Next year, I'm on a flight with Alicia to Bulgaria. I'll never forget it, because when I got on this flight, the Blackburn, Chairman was on my flight, because it was a chartered flight, and the Blackburn team, because they was playing CSK Sofia. I'm going, what the fuck's going on? Anyway, got to this set. This is when I realized our movie world worked. Got to the set, the production woman turned up. She's like, here's your mobile phone. We're taking you to this, to this hotel. Here's your sides, what you'll be shooting tomorrow. I'm thinking that, you know, is this going to be a little, uh, you know, a little role, not with Steven or anything. It is this one-on-one, -on -one, me and him in a jail cell. <laughs> I've grown up with this fucking kid, yeah, this guy, same, James, this yeah. kid, this, this legend. Mm -hmm. Out for a kill, Nico, under, under siege. siege. Yeah. I'm going, no, this is word. So next day I'm sitting on my thing, I'm like- Did they have the ponytail? Watch this now. So I've gone, <laughs> fuck, I'm reading my lines. I'm in my trailer. They've put me in my own trailer. I'm not used to this shit in, in, I'm in music, I am. But yeah. so I'm like, this is brilliant. I'm in Sofia on this, derelict land next you know she's like Steven Seagal wants to meet you yeah this is gospel truth he's walking down a thing like this and he gets to my trailer and it's the first thing he says to me he looks at me like this and he goes are you the rapper so I went yeah he went I don't want you to be a fucking rapper and then just stared me out <laughs> so I've gone well I'm not here to be a fucking rapper that's all I knew what to say back to him he looked at me like this and he went I like him. <laughs> I, walked off. I think he can prop a scrap as well. Yeah, he's a uh, loser. Yeah, so I'm gonna tell yeah, you the yeah. authentic stories uh -huh. that I like, and everyone knows this. So anyway, shot the film, shot the scene. I've gone to him, do you wanna go through the lines? He's gone like this. I never fucking read lines. I'm going, so what do we do? He goes, we know the basis of the, of the scene. We just shoot it. We've literally shot it within five minutes. He's just got up and walked off. I'm like, what a ledge. I spent four, uh, I spent four days with him in Bulgaria, mm -hmm. in the Sheraton Hotel. Me and him became like this. He's then invited me to his hotel room. So imagine I'm in his hotel room at night. This is word. He's in there with a guy that looks after him. He's got a guy sitting outside his door with a gun. And this is where you're, you're gonna know why he's got the gun. So this is a Bulgarian guy. He's got another guy that's LAPD that rolls with him. And then he's got like two escorts in his room. How, this is the most random room I'm in. Mm -hmm. So Steven Skull loves reggae. So he's playing reggae in the room. I'm, <laughs> I'm rapping <laughs> over the guitar. I really hope you interview him one day because he'll talk about yeah. this. So I'm rapping, I'm rapping. <laughs> Steven Skull's playing his guitar. And me and him are buzzing off each other like this. And then he goes, um, he says to me, I've met a lot. He goes, I've met a lot of genuine people in my life and that, but he goes, you're just a good kid, man. He goes, I love you and blah, blah, blah. Next thing he asked me about my neck. So I told him what happened. Next, you know, me and him are sizing up war wounds. But after my neck, I couldn't really go any further. <laughs> because he was like, he was like, well, this is when I got shot in Yugoslavia. Yeah. This is when I got shot 
there. This is when I got shot there. I was like, how many times have you been shot? Been shot, shot? Yeah. Oh, loads of times. Now I realized the story. This is going to trigger your memory. So I go back home to Bulgaria. He goes to me, um, when you come to Los Angeles, make sure you ring me. So six months later, after I've shot the film, I'm going to Los Angeles. Perfect. I'm going to shoot, shoot a T4 special. After I finished filming it, Steven Seagal sent me a car to pick me up. Now he's took me to his house in the Hollywood Hills. It is the most bizarre thing. So you're going to laugh about everything because you're going to relate to everything. So I've sat in this, I've gone in his garden and then there's like a woman selling him, selling him beads, spiritual beads, because he has spiritual beads. You know, he's very spiritual. Yeah, yeah, he's always wearing the black robes and shit. Yeah, so me and him are laughing. He's like, Michael, how are you, man? He goes, I'm going to take you for dinner. I said, yeah, I'm cool. Because he calls me Michael. He goes, I'm cool, Stephen, man. And me and him are having a laugh. He goes, oh, my daughters was looking forward to you coming. So he goes, so one of his daughters starts speaking to me. She's going, his daughter keeps going to me, say, say, say water. So I'm going, what? So I'm like, so I'm going, water. And she's cracking up. Oh, look at the way he says water. Uh -huh. And then she goes, and Stephen goes, yeah, because my ex-wife, her mum is English. So I went, what? And he went, you know who my ex-wife is, Harvey? I went, who? He went, Kelly LeBrock. The what? Woman, the woman in red. Yeah. James, do you remember yeah, the woman yeah, in red? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember Weird Science? Yeah. They took you kids at that, that yes. fucking belter. Yes. Used to, was, That's yeah, his ex wife. Yeah. So I've gone. She's English, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was his daughter. Uh -huh. So that's why she's going. Oh, I miss England. How people say water. Yeah. So and they, I, fucking hell, she was right. a belter. So I've gone. Yeah. I get it now. Watch this. Until this day, no one's ever lived this. No one. He's gone. I'm taking Michael for dinner. So as he said, I've taken Michael for dinner, his wife's then turned around and gone, no, Stephen, no, it's not safe. It's not safe. We're in fucking Hollywood. No. The LAPD guy and the Bulgarian guy, I already know them from shooting the film, so I'm like family to them. Mm -hmm. But the Bulgarian guy is, the, is his guy, that's his shooter, isn't it? That's, he's a licensed bodyguard. And then the LAPD he, PD guy can carry because they can in America. So next thing you know, I'm going... Why is she saying not safe? We've then got in a, a Mercedes with the security to go and eat food in LA. I've got in a bomb-proof car. Bomb then Stephen's gone, yeah, you know, like the wife don't let me going out because, you know, the problem I've got with the gotties. <laughs> <laughs> the mafia. So I went, and then it hit me. Oh shit, I read about this. And then he told me, they gave him a hundred grand, didn't they, to start his film career. Mm -hmm. But he said that basically he'll give them back the money with interest when he makes it back, which he did. But then he's, they've then tried to go to him. I want a hundred grand off you for every film that you've ever made. He's gone, do one. Mm -hmm. So then the guy, he's now onto him in that time. So now I'm sitting in the car. <laughs> I'm just the car and the guys are after him. <laughs> and it didn't hit me. Mm -hmm. And then when it got back, you can Google it and everyone yeah. reads about it. And then I went, oh fuck. And he went, yeah, I've had problems with the guys. And I'm going, yeah, it's fair fucking play to him for standing his ground, though. But you know what I realise? Why he's standing his ground? Don't fuck with him. Do you think the triads that he's rolling with give a fuck? Yeah. So the Chinese guy, I remember, the, the guys that rolled with us, there was a tag-along car. I, I didn't ask too many questions, mm -hmm. but I knew why the car was tagging along. This is a car. I feel like guns. Just driving, mm -hmm. like this. And I thought, how are you even going to a restaurant and you've got the gotties on you? John got it. John fucking got it. Yeah. But it got resolved in the end. I know they've sorted it out, but I couldn't believe it. First time I've ever been in a bomb-proof car. How many people have done that? <laughs> I'd like to know. What do you think now that looking back at your career and obviously still young and just thinking, fuck me, do you actually, talking about it now, do you think, fuck me, I've actually done all right in my life? Sometimes I can't. Like me and my, like... See, because you lived it, it's different. Yeah. So even telling your stories about Steven Cigar and whoever, whatever you've done, it's, it's mad to think that from it's, a boy from fucking Battersea. It's bizarre. Yeah, my my um uh, my god cousin said to me um I'm like his hero, and I went to a family christening in South East London. My god cousin said, cousin, I said what? He went, do you actually realise what you've done? Just randomly just asking me that, and I said, I always say, I give thanks to God, and I worked extremely hard, and I do look back, but sometimes when I lie in my bed, and I look at the ceiling, I think fucking hell. Mm -hmm. Like bro, I can look at my career and go. I've sold millions of records. I've worked with Steven Seagal, Christina Milian, Gabriel Byrne. 
the reggae art Egyptian in my career. I've sold out the O2. What more do I want? That's why I don't understand how artists can be bitter or how artists can live in the past. It's good he's doing it. Yeah. I'm never going to be the same Harvey that I was in terms of my musical success 15 years ago because it, there's a reason why it's called the prime of your career. James, I'm so thankful, my man. Till this day, I'm so humbled and I'm so fucking thankful. But don't get it twisted. I fucking worked hard, my man. Yeah. I your, worked hard. Your mum will be proud of you. Yep, 100%, your bro. Your mum will be proud, yeah. man. She would have seen a lot of kids getting killed and going through 100%. all the pain and misery. She would have probably thought it was you, especially getting stabbed in the neck. So to, to see you, her, her baby son growing would have... Her only son, James. Yeah, yeah so yeah. to lose you, it would have been fucking disastrous for her. That, so for her to watch you grow and do what you've got to do, man, she would be buzzing. Because everything, like my mum's lost two brothers to murder. Yeah. She's lost her husband to leukemia. Yeah. I was a fuck up for 15 years, man. I was a lost soul, drink, drugs, violence, anger, frustration. So I was the only kind of man in her life who was a boy. It's only the last two years of becoming yeah. a man. I've still got a lot to learn. I'm learning. I'm learning. There's no role models for me. I don't look up to anybody and nobody gives me advice. I need to fend for myself and educate myself 30 years in the streets to yeah. then seven years of knowledge, understanding the brain and to make the changes. But it's all for family. No matter the watches or the fame or the, the money. That's all it's, it's for. All bullshit. Just for that That's moment all it's to for. achieve a goal when them to say... Like even you getting put up there with fucking Patrick Swayze and that. Just that getting put up for awards. That moment... So solid crew one and that's the moment where you're the tears the, and but then it goes, it disappears. It did, and, and that's what people don't understand, yeah. And that's what I said to people, yeah. You need to respect your career, yeah, and you have to also respect the opportunity that you've been that you've been given. And James, one thing I always say is like the key, no matter what I've done, I don't hold no form of arrogance or form of ego. Because we've had our ego moments, that comes yeah. with it. But all I do this for is for my fucking children. Every day I wake up, wake up out of bed, that is my motivation. And also to make my mum, my mum turned 60 last week and just to make her life Happy e birthday, easier. Mom. Thank you, James, man. Yeah. And because she's seen everything. When I got stabbed, you know, the first phone call that my mum got, got for an iron apple that I was dead. She thought I was dead for three hours. The pain that she so was So I said to my mum the other day, how did you feel, mum? And my mum said, Junior, my whole world. She says that my, you know, my, everyone knows my, my mate that's going to come and meet us later. Like mm -hmm. he held my mum's hand and he's known in the area. And he said, my mum was shaking. Like she, she kept shaking her foot and going, please bring back my son. Please bring back my son. He can't be dead. He can't be dead. Imagine that. It gives me chills talking about yeah, it. Same, that man. I put my mum through that. Yeah. It put, life is so precious, man. I try and say it like, James, that's why I don't fear. I, like, I don't like, I don't fear. I've sat in rooms with the top gangsters and they was go, Harvey, man, you just make me laugh. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I'm like, the same. Yeah, yeah, they're just yeah. like, yeah. You're, you're fun. You're not scared to be yourself. And I would tell a man, I don't give a fuck about your reputation. If I don't agree with what you're doing, mate, I'll just tell you straight. Mm -hmm. Don't mean we have to fucking, but my path may not be your path, but I also, I respect it. You know what I mean? And yeah. I don't need to name drop. Like this is what I like, with, what I always say with me and Romeo, yeah? We don't need to know, name drop anyone that's around us or anyone that protects us. I could sit and reel off six names and people on camera be going, oh, fuck, that's who's behind them. But you know what? Some things are best left unsaid. Do you know what? Because if you've got that, pe them people behind you and you've got that power, I hope that I don't need to ever use them type of people because I live a good life. But just know, yeah, they're on call. Mm -hmm. So when these people think we're idiots or they think that me and Romeo are the easy targets, good luck with that one. Yeah, that silence is golden. We spoke about that. Shit yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need to do, all mm -hmm. the, do this because what is like, James, like, I, see, I see your platform, yeah? And I could always like, I could like, I probably gravitate to more of the old school gangsters on your platform because they tell the truth. Yeah, old school gangsters. Everything then was really done done on morals and respect. But the old, the old old school gangster was all about looking after their community, mm -hmm. getting back. And gangsters, they gangsters deal with gangsters. I don't respect the gangster that sits there and just tries to glorify everything. What are you trying to sound like, Braveheart? <laughs> what are yeah. you? What are you showing the kids that's going to make them improve or change? Do you understand? Me sitting here for one hour telling war stories, what is that doing for people's minds? How am I now helping the young kids now that are going out there every day stabbing each other? What are, what are you doing? So when I'm sitting down with James English, hopefully you fucking learned something. I'm not trying to glorify shit because all it done to me, it made me lose a lot of friends and it had me lying in my own blood. 
Does that make me feel like, feel good? Does it make me any harder? Does it make me hard that I've been stabbed? Does it make me hard that I've been in jail? I'd rather have not sat in jail, James. I'd what was it like in jail? It was weird because it was a time when my career was fine, but my personal life was just a mess. Was I still smoking a lot of weed then? Yeah. Do you know what? I was... It was weird, James, because you're going to laugh. You see when I smoke weed? Because I'm an athlete and everyone knows, I'm, you know what I mean? I look after myself. If you see me on my Instagram, I'm, I'm a fit yeah. guy. But um, I smoke what I can handle. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But what's that to the average person? Know what I mean? A few joints? What? Well, do you know what? Is it pure skunk? Or no. Or tobacco? No, nah, because I no tobacco. Tobacco in my weed. Mm -hmm. And do you know what? I have a break off skunk. I, always, I like to smoke Thai weed. Because Thai is this level. But That's not strong. Yeah, but I'm a nighttime weed guy. Kids in bed. Glass of wine, but jokes aside, it's like that. Um, that's how I am because I know my limits, and I love I love weed for my creative process. So I write some sick lyrics on weed. I like being creative, and I love a spliff. But when what was weird about the jail thing was because of all the women stuff, God had to slow me down. And what I done that day I was James. I was this is only 2016. I was fucking banned from driving. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I stitched myself up. So it is, I should never have been in a car anyway. But imagine this, I've got my music up full volume and I've got my phone in my hand and the two policemen have walked past. And that's when I knew about how police got, have got it in for so solid. Still? Oh, still, mate. Still, 100%, 100%. Because they was, if they get a so solid member in their court, they love it, yeah? So this is when I knew and I realised it and my lawyer, who's a serious lawyer, said, nah, they really got it in for you, lot, didn't they? And I went, my music's up and the policeman's gone, you're on your phone. So I went, but my, I got Bluetooth in my car. So I said, I'm not on my phone, mate. I said, my phone's in my hand, but I'm not on my phone. So he's just gone. But then I, what I've noticed, he's clocked this me. So he's gone, pull over. I looked at him like this, James. And I went, fuck off <laughs> and drove off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. My address, if nothing's linked to me, it's going to my mum or something. Yeah, mm. my mum goes, Junior. I've had a riot van turn up at the house for you. A riot van. She went, I, I, I a riot van though. She said to the police, come on, mate. Could have turned up in a normal car. Anyway, I've had to hand myself in at a certain point. Because I've driven through like two different boroughs, they've done it like two times driving on a band and like driving away from police. That was the key into this yeah. case, isn't it? So I've then kicked out to LA. At the time, I'm with the mother of my fucking second child. Like I've got mad the sky on with her. I'm getting away from her. I've had to kick out to LA to go and record the Chris and Emily Ann song. I've recorded the song, but as I'm landing back in Gatwick, there's like a dark cloud. So I'm like, I've got a court case coming up. I'm thinking, there's no way in hell they're sending me jail. Got a big boy lawyer. They've kept me in the court till four o'clock in the afternoon, James, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I knew, James? Yeah. Uh, this feeling to this day makes me go, Ugh. The guard stand behind you. And one you. of my boys in here has been Joe, he knows the feeling, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when they lock the dock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he went, I never forget it. And I heard the keys. And then the woman said, All rise. And then I heard the doors behind me. And the door went, Ch -ch -ch. And I went, Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Mr. Harvey, blah, blah, blah. You're a role model to kids. You should know better. You're, 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 you're irresponsible with driving. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. You'll be sentenced to three, 12 weeks in Wormwood Scrubs. I was yeah. like this. Do you know how deep it was? I turned around like this, yeah? And the guy in the dock <laughs> who had to take me downstairs, <laughs> uh, take me downstairs went, yo, brother, I'm a big fan, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to put handcuffs on you. <laughs> he went, can you just promise me you're not going to do anything? I said, bruv. I said, don't put handcuffs on me. Mm -hmm. I goes, I'll peacefully walk downstairs. He went, no problem. My mother, do you know the first thing? The, so the police, the journalists are in there. The police are laughing with the journalist and the journalist and the magistrates are all laughing together. It, and and it, 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 you know what it felt like, James? It just felt like a setup. Yeah. They're all laughing together. Like when I'm, even the day before, I was already going jail because they had Harvey from So Solid. So I'm like, no problem. So anyway, I get to jail. You know how it goes? Yeah. I said to the screw, are you going to put me in isolation? Because if people think they're going to fucking target me, this is what I'm saying to like the, the screws. Mm -hmm. No, Harvey, don't worry. Da -da. I said, no. I said, cool. We're going to put you on B-Wing. I'm like, fucking B-Wing? I've heard about B-Wing. So I'm like, no worries. They put me in a holding cell the first night. I'm like, now nah, everything's hit me. My whole life and karma has just gone. 
a lot of time to reflect. Just had a fucking baby too, which mm-hmm. which wasn't planned. It was all madness going on as you, you know, yeah. go <laughs> So I'm like, this is fucking carnage. Next day, a serious head comes to my cell. Serious head. I'm going to say his name. The person that's called this serious head is Lisa. Yeah. My brother's in jail. Make sure he's all right. So I fucking give Lisa the utmost respect. Mm-hmm. Make sure he's all right. 10 minutes later, this guy's come back to my cell. Hobbs! Anything you need? You good? Yeah. Listen, here's a pillowcase, shower gel, pot noodles. You know how it goes yeah, in jail. Yeah, yeah. Class chocolate. You know how it goes. Yeah. Chocolate. Yeah. After the first few days learning how, to, learning how gel works, first I'm going to say to anyone, gel's a mugs game. So fucking boring. Million percent. Boring. I stayed five weeks in there and the guys that I met, everyone on B-Wing, I want to big them up in Wormwood Scrubs, yeah? Because the love that all the boys showed me in there and the way that, that they treated me from the screws, nothing but respect for everyone. I got on with Turkish mafia, <laughs> Polish man, <laughs> travellers. <laughs> because once everyone got there with me, they was like, Harvey's humble. And in Never jail, that chip in your shoulder keep yourself to yeah. yourself. Do you know what one gangster said to me in there? What the fuck are you doing in here with us? You're too talented. Mm-hmm. I said, I know. He said, they made an example of you though, bro. Do you know what I mean? Got my nut down. I got myself a job in the kitchen. I used to cook, cook for scrubs. So anyone that ate, 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 apple, apple crumble in world with scrubs, that was me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like coming out then? Even though a few weeks in the jail, but it, it is very humbling to realise how... <sighs> Close it is to being in there, like one incident, one fight, one scrap, one punch. It's easy to get life or off. Literally, now. do you know what I mean? Especially if you're saying so solid crew, I think everybody in so solid crew has been in prison or been charged. Everyone with something. minus Lisa, yeah, because and hopefully she's a fucking woman. She's yeah, all, yeah hopefully. Well, she's not, she, she walked away from a uh, court case last yeah, year, yeah. I know, so I know, Lisa, everybody is. It's, Lisa's, Lisa's had to weigh a few people in. <laughs> you get me? Because now the girls yeah. want to try it with her. Uh-huh. And Lisa can fucking fight, boy. Yeah. Mate, I've seen Lisa wrap up some people, mate. I'm mm. like, get in there, Mafia. <laughs> but um, it was mad. But when I came out, that was the, that was the change. Mm-hmm. That was the full change. That's like now where it just brought me my ultimate peace and happiness. Because like I said, my mum just said, it's got to stop now. Mm. Everything, you know, you, you, you don't want to kill your own career because you've got so much good things happening to you. And um, it was nice with this one. Because when I came out of jail, the red top papers was usually being their usual hateful towards me and calling me a, calling me this and that and enjoying enjoying my downfall. But the actual industry supported me because they was like, he's been absolutely stitched. Jail. This boy's record. My criminal record, James, is shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Driving, fighting back in the day. Whoopie dee do. Like Nothing that's gonna rock the boat, like they're not, they're not, nothing like Bronson, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Who I fucking love. Yeah. Funny enough, how weird is this? The first mm. time I watched Bronson was in jail. How weird is that's that? And up, I was like, it? this is quality film. Yeah. Yeah. But it ain't nice was, when you're waking up in jail going. Was that the Tom yeah. Hardy one? Yes, the Tom yeah. Hardy one, which was good. So that was it. And that's when, from that day, you know, I came out of jail. A week, four days later, I'm doing Red Bull Coach Clash in front of 25,000 people. I had to sign the contract in jail. My nan dies three days later. Sorry to hear that. Thank you, James, man. It was a mad fucking time. And then six months later, my stepfather goes and I'm carrying his coffin. And I said, this is God telling me something. Jail, a marriage that I shouldn't have been in with a girl that's had, had my beautiful daughter. Walked out of a, a, relation, a marriage that should never have happened. Grand, granddad. I think you need to wake up, of. God's telling you something. So God went, you're going to scrubs. You know why you're going to fucking scrubs, you? Because you're going to learn to slow your fucking self down. And you know what? That five weeks taught me, taught me to respect everything, everything that I'm doing. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. And I've came out six months later, I got on a plane. Cause I, um, I went, I, I flew out to IB for to do a show. Came back, had a good chat with a guy in Battersea. That's like my mentor. He's like, he's like a raster. And he said that, um, just have a break. My mum said, have a break from women. Learn to love yourself before you love anyone else. Had two years break. Got on a plane to do a show in Dubai with my son's godfather. Big up OTM. I said to him on the plane, nah, bro, I'm having a break from women. I'm just concentrating on the kids and my career. 
famous last words met my wife fall in love we've been together fucking for nearly yeah, five years fair, and fair, she's mom, but like she is the rock of all rocks james there's no woman like her she's lived it too because like i said uh you know her brother done 10 Mm-hmm. She comes from a tough family in Wolverhampton. She knows, the ins and outs. She knows how it goes. She'll see through your bullshit. Yep, she knows how it goes. She also knows how womanizing men move. Yeah. And she helped me heal. She helped me be great again. I would never, ever disrespect her and my kids. That's all women want. Never. And that's all men seem to fucking do. Never. Like, every girlfriend I've fucked never. over that. You've all, we've always got the good intentions. Yeah. But then something fucking happens. We're manipulators as well. And... That's why a lot of stuff I'm trying to work on is to heal, yeah. heal and then to truly love yourself to then I believe you can truly love 100%. another, which is important. But And that's the best bit of advice so that she gave me. She's been your rock then. You have you look happy, everything that you're doing yeah, is man, fresh. Life's and, good. Yeah. So what's the plans for the future then? A lot, man. So the biggest thing that's going to obviously get everyone is that we we got the So Solid documentary coming out. Mm. When's We've, that brought up next year? So it was, I would because of COVID, I'm not going to say until yeah. 2022, yeah. but um, it's with a massive company, a massive channel. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the right time because people need to see the true story. And it's going to be good because it's going to cover both sides. So they're going to speak to people that try to ban us, authorities. It's not just going to be like based on the, it's going to be like the, you know, the, the negative and positive yeah. are so solid. And um, currently obviously start shooting a film again in two months. I can't wait to be back on a film set. Oh, that's going to, it's going to be, a, it's yeah. going to be a great feeling uh-huh. again. And life's just good. Obviously I've got the clothing range, mm-hmm. Trono. That's and you're doing your own podcast, which we will plug. That's right. What yeah, doing, brother, where can that's people right. watch us? See ya. Oh, thank download. you. Thank you, James, man. So just enjoying life, James, yeah. man. Um, you know, just with me and the missus, we're, we're moving again. We're buying a, another boot. James, I'm, I'm moving to a farm, bro. Yeah, that's class. That's when you know you're fucking doing well, mate. Yeah, like- You want away from old bullshit. Yeah, because I said that in the, my older life, I just want to like, I goes, I just want to be on a farm where I've got my own, because p- people know my dealings with-, with um football I still at the moment James like I don't like to call myself an agent because I don't like what agents represent yeah scumbags some of them they're scumbags so and I've played football so a lot of players that you're watching in league one and league two I've got a lot of their deals because I've got good relationships with the manager fucking big money in those leagues yeah man. well you there you know yeah. so um, big up loads of people as you know people know people like Danny Simpson yeah. who's now signed for Bristol um, footballer Danny Simpson <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it's my close friend, Hayden Mullins, my, is my best friend who's now got the Colchester manager's job. So I'm very active in, in football mm-hmm. at the moment. Hayden's funny enough, called me on Saturday. He wants me to go to the game tomorrow to sit with my iPad and do some notes in the stands. He wants me to watch the game from yeah, my overhead yeah. view because mm-hmm. he knows how, how well my knowledge of the game is. So I've been doing a lot of work with him in football and I'm just enjoying life. I want to be on a, you know, as I said, we're on the farm with my kids with loads of dogs and- I'm the same, that's the vision. Just being I'm a- going to do this for five years. Yep, there and you go, out, there well, you go. I'll make a few million just yeah. interviewing people. Yeah. Opportunities will arise. I'll go with the right ones, make my money and then I'm out. Fuck, he's old man. Your, like. your documentary, your documentary is going to kick off though. Yeah, so yeah. Got, I'm going to create so many documentaries. So I'll create probably about 10 within this five years and everyone will be next level. My stuff, yeah. these interviews will be watched 20, 30 years 100%. time. 100%. So even those songs and that are timeless. So Solid Crew 21 is timeless. 100%. You it, and you're still fucking That's right. you're jamming. So these interviews will be watched 20, 30 years yeah. down the line as well. Some of these interviews will be timeless. The people, some of them will get watched in school as well. Even of a course. lot of people get inspiration watching you now. It can be fucking done. It's correct. Like you're saying it's not easy. It's not just a case of flashing tits and ass no. and, and money, man. It's a no. hard grind. The easiest part is actually going on the stage and singing the songs. Mm-hmm. There's everything around it. The bullshit. And what I, hate, what I didn't like with music, music, it wasn't like within football, you can answer back in a couple of days, can't you? Because you can go and score a goal. It could be like, fuck you lot. Yeah. But in music, man, you just got to sit there and be like, got to wait to wait for people to, because music, you get reviewed. They're reviewing your song. They're reviewing your persona. They're reviewing your character. So I hate you. You just put me in a job where I just got to get reviewed all the time. Yeah. And then people make up their own, and you know. Yeah, opinions. Everybody's got an opinion. Oh, now. How was it when, yeah. when you were getting banned from gigs and gigs were getting cancelled? Could you understand why they were cancelling with the violence that was coming yeah. with it? Or... Were you very not anti authority but against them because you're fucking with my career? Mm. But it's like, what's both ways as well, doesn't it? The so solid concert, that's the authorities, fuck them because there was no need to cancel our, our, our main tour because that was a tour in auditoriums, famous auditoriums that you know, you know, the famous SSE yeah, yeah, in yeah, Glasgow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, from where you're from, um, Wembley, um, Kentish Town, these are big venues. They know we we already said that have police at the venues. 
we had a team of security that you're not going to fuck with. Yeah, but they knew that we'd make a million pound each. And they didn't want, want us to accumulate that money to have that power because they said that we was an organized music gang. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Just like every group. But do you know what I mean? James, how long has this been going on? This has been going on from NWA. This has been going on yeah. from Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. This has been going on from fucking Wu-Tang Clan. So I was like, you lot still doing this shit? Oh, they're now organised gangs. Was there a lot of racism involved, Harvey? 100%. Towards, how hard was that then? It's, oh, it's, Ain't fuck all changed, man. Yeah, like, it's still the fucking same. same yeah. It's still the same. Yeah. Like, when I, literally, any social member that goes to court depends on the judge. And you can tell as soon as the judge walks out. As soon as I, when, when I got sent to jail, the woman that walked out, she just had it in for me. No matter what, my, my, my lawyer was presenting my, a case to me and she was just like... <sighs> Do you know what I mean? You're not even trying to hear any logics in this. What you've done, you've gone home with your husband and you've Googled so solid and all you've seen is cancelled concerts, firearms, the usual stereotypical fucking shit to say about a black talented group. Yeah. Blame the streets, blame where we come from, James. It's a load of bollocks, mate. Mm -hmm. I refuse to be, don't stereotype me. Don't put me in a fucking box. You're a white man from Scotland, so? I don't look at your colour. I look at how you treat me. I look at your energy. I don't see color. I see you just being a good man. Yeah. But I've suffered it all my life, James. I've got family from Liverpool. I've got family from Plymouth. I've got family from Cardiff. I used to go to all these places for six weeks holiday. I did not learn to fight in London. I learned to fight in Plymouth because that's a Navy town. They use these. Just like when you go to Scotland, my friends that are from Glasgow, they're all hard. Mm -hmm. Scottish man can fight. It's only in London people are quick to yeah, guns and pussies, nice. fight. There's no harm in fighting and getting beaten up. You win some, you lose, you lose some. some. I'm not scared to lose a fight, bro. That's just, the, that's just the belly of the beast. So I've seen it all, man, racism. When I used to go to Plymouth, I was like, my cousins are mixed race. And like, my cousins used to have arguments. People would be like, you're, you're fucking nigger. I'd be like, what? But it was normal to them to the point that they would get called a nigger. They accept that. So in Plymouth, that's why people knew me in Plymouth. Cause I used to be smashing up all the boys. You what? Hold that, <laughs> hold that, what? Because I come yeah. from London mentality. Mm -hmm. You can't call someone a nigger in the streets that I come from and get the fuck away with it. Do you understand? Black people and white people in the hood are integrated, we're all one. Asian people, we're all one. My Asian guy, that's my Asian nigger. You get me? That's my white nigger. Because we're integrated. Yeah. We don't see all that bullshit. But when I went out of London, that's when I noticed it. Like Plymouth, Cardiff, Liverpool. Like, wow, you're some real racist there. And you think, you used to be confused, especially like Liverpool. Liverpool has a, a very big multicultural environment, but so many different, you go to somewhere like Highton in Liverpool, fucking racist. And you're like, this is weird. Cause you've got Somalians in Liverpool. Cause a lot of the Somalians docked in Cardiff and Liverpool, cause it has docks, Albert Dock, Cardiff Dock. So I was confused how it became more racist the further up north I went. How did you deal with that growing up? Just constantly fighting. There's a come a stage Fight, where you James. know these people are weak, though. Yeah. Um. When you're young, you're hot-headed. You don't. Yeah. You're not. Obviously, now I'm trying to defend yourself. Yeah. You just think you look at it as an insult. But then, also, when I was a kid, I got racially attacked in Clap Clapham Junction Station. Mm -hmm. But I fought my and with these guys, and I never ever forget it. Um. Big up Keith Chin, man, my dude that came from the station at the right time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we we just walking through the station. These guys were like, what are you looking at, you black bastard? One of my mates that I'm with, one of my boys that I'm with at the time, um, George, he's doing bird right now. So he'll be, be out, be out yeah. soon. Um, they've kind of followed us down this alleyway in Clapham, near Clapham Junction Station. And obviously George is not really much of a fighter, man. Do you know what I mean? So we're kicking off with these guys. So I'm smashing the life out of this, out of this guy. And then the, the, one of the guys is on top of my friend, but he's doing this. So I thought he was stabbing him. So George was like, Junior! And he's like, he screamed to his voice. So like gone over to that guy, dealt with him. But um, now two of them have then turned on me. So I'm like, fucking hell, it's coming from both angles now. And luckily, Keith Chin. <laughs> mm. My mate was just, he's a hard bastard too. He was just literally walking home from the station at the time. And I don't know where Keith come from, mate, but he came out of nowhere. And let's just say after that, they were both sleeping. Yeah. Do you feel yeah. blessed as well to have survived a lot? You seem protected by whatever the fuck's out there. Then, yeah. Whatever. Do you feel blessed and guided by something? Your mum pray a lot? Candles. My mum prays all the time, yeah, bro. Something's so do protected I. you to so get you I. through your misery. Like, it's, I don't know, everybody's got different beliefs and different gods, but I definitely believe there's something out there that... My grandfather... Guides somebody. You know I'm from Sierra Leone? Yeah. Um, 
had a kid in here, some Capro Hard to uh, yeah. Hard to Capro. Hardy DiCaprio, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great guy, He's a man. Le- yeah, yeah, so Leone boy. Yeah, yeah. And then, like I said, people fucking Sam Walker's got Sierra Leone ties. Mm-hmm. The guy from Liverpool was involved. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you'd never judge someone's journey. You might think that's a white man, mm-hmm. but he's got Sierra Leone in him. Well, I had UB40 on yesterday as well, and um, Ali Campbell and the man Legends. Astro. Legends, man. But they, when they used to go to their concerts, man, but people with the bottles, the spitting, the throwing uh, urinate, u- uh, urine on them. It's fucking nuts, man. It's fucking like, crazy. people can accept that? And this was the 80s, 90s. Yeah. And that was when, that was the punk rocker culture and, yeah. and things like that. Skinheads and stuff. Yeah. So they suffered bad. Badly. Yeah. Bad time. And when you're doing that, the way they look too, it mm. didn't go with the music. So, but my, like I said, everyone knows like my family, my aunties in Sierra Leone, my mother. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know I, know I was blessed. You know what I mean? Because... Mm. When your heart's good, James, no matter what people say about you, yeah, it'll always shine through. Well, we do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and I remember I, I've got um, one of my bona fide friends who's um, very serious out here in the streets. He's a very spiritual guy. He said to me, Harvey, go through and do what the fuck you want to do and c- concentrate on your career, yeah? Your blessings and your energy is surrounded with goodness, bro. So you're a good guy. You know what I mean? You don't have, e- your soul's not evil. You know what I'm saying? He said, just get on with it. Don't worry about all this bullshit out here. Just keep on flying. And the amount of chances that I've had, when I, like I said, when I respected karma, James, that's when my life became beautiful. You know what I mean? You, 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 you are a, you make your own path sometimes, don't you? Yeah. So if you want to go, if you want to go and follow the devil, don't moan when the devil comes back and bites you in your fucking ass. Yeah, and I always will. Do you understand? Always and will. he always will, as yeah. we both know, because, Characters like me and you, we've lived on the edge, haven't we, mate? Yeah, pushing we've the done, boundaries. We've pushed, we've pushed the boundaries. And, um, not bad guys, though. Like we but not up. bad guys. I'm not, not the same guys. as that. All my friends were killers and stabbers and there shooters. There you go. I was the funny guy. Yeah. I just love shagging pussy there and fucking <laughs> and making money. And that, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Because I always think, man, fuck. They used yeah. to thrive on going to prison so they could have it. was yeah. like a badge. I used to think, fuck that, that's man. Two, that's, fuck that. That's two years of our pussy. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that, man. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. bad. So, but if you know what's like, funny, like, so funny, one thing I do like, all my, all the boys that have grown up in South London that know me, if you want to, if go to Harvey's events, it's just girls. <laughs> I need to get one of those like, events. <laughs> none of my boys go, you go to Harvey's events, yeah? yeah? There's no fighting. There's no mm. negativity. I don't, James, I choose my I choose my surroundings and the energies that I have yeah, around me. Yeah. yeah, it's my world. Yeah, and there's not a rule book saying that you have to have negative people around you. Mm. But every time my boys, I remember when I woke up on my 40th birthday and I was like, that one's in that room. That one ended up sleeping with that one. I was like, that's all I want people to do is be shagging and getting drunk. <laughs> I don't want no, no fights. I don't yeah. want. And everyone woke up and people was messaging me like MC Bushkin for the Heartless Crew. He said, Harvey, that was one of the best nights I've ever had. You know, friends getting with other friends uh, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that shit. And I just loved it because. No drama. Aside, listen, this is my fucking journey, mate. And you can have your opinion on it but you ain't walked in my fucking shoes. So you can't tell me shit about my journey because I've lived it. So I respect people that have an opinion on it, but I'm blessed. I'm 41 years old yeah. and I've got the story to tell. And now I'm just going to share it with my kids and just not, just, yeah. just let them Who's do it. Who's the best person you've ever interviewed? Spike Lee. Yeah? Yeah. He's a legend. But yeah. Uh, yeah. That's on my Instagram. Why was that? Because I felt like he... He comes from the same place as me. Mm-hmm. And I also respect him because he had the industry turn their back on him. And when he made all his films in his early days, it was all done independently. And I know that a lot of it was done with some dodgy money and that. And so when he started to build up his film career, he invested in himself. No one would invest in a black film with Spike Lee back in the day. Mm-hmm. And then he made Do The Right Thing. And I just love what he stands for. And I also love that at the time when you wasn't seeing a lot of black stars, he was bringing them through. Denzel Washington was in his first film for Queen and Country. Halle Berry's been in, been in mm-hmm. a Spike Lee film. He's a pioneer to me of, of, of the directing game, especially in the culture when, like you said, you know, black mm-hmm. films wasn't big in the Hollywood market around yeah, them times. I had something, I don't know, I can't remember who it was, just a couple of weeks ago and they, they were doing the acting, but they says, look, kid, there's no point in doing it because uh, scripts now aren't for black people. Oh, no. It's, I was like, what? Yeah, it's, what a thing in it. Like, I've been waiting for a script. I, the last film I shot was in 2013 with Gabriel Byrne and Leo Gregory, mm-hmm. right? And I've had, I've had some scripts sent to me and I'm like, what are these scripts, man? 
Right. His Ron Brown would get by was he won the Pride of Britain last year. Look at that. Yeah, and that's what he says. He, said, he was doing the acting. He says, there's no scripts. He's like, what? And that was mad. like, what's that? He's so many, the, the, the talented actors, but biggest then, talented actors like Denzel Washington, the fucking greatest actors and, of all time. And, he, and these guys, you've got to think to yourselves, like, they're legends. So just for him and him and Jackie, Jackie Chan, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie yeah, Chan. Yeah, yeah. Jackie Chan was good fun. Was that for Rush Hour? Rush Hour, the first one. And, but do you know the most moodiest person I've interviewed? Two moody people. Who? Yeah. Kristen Aguilera was horrible. Was she? Nasty, horrible woman. Um, Ed Norton was weird. Wasn't horrible. He has a weird character. He was weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's like that method actor. Yeah. Sure. He was weird. Barry Pepper was good. No, Barry Pepper. Yeah. Barry Pepper was top mm-hmm. man. And um, Jennifer Lopez was class. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll down my Instagram yeah. today I will, I will. and you can yeah, see yeah, that yeah. on there. What is all your socials? What is all your social medias? How can people get a hold of you? So my, my social medias is um, at Harvey Official. Uh-huh. That's everything. That is my um, my Twitter and Instagram. My Snapchats is um, Harvey SSC. So Harvey So Solo Crew, okay. but broken down to SSC. And what about the podcast that you're doing now? I, so the podcast that I'm doing that's going to be launching on SBTV uh-huh. so everyone knows Jamal Edwards big yeah. up Jamal and Isaac mm-hmm. um, I'm going to be launching that man so do you know what is? you're going to see me just enjoying myself bro do you know what I mean like just talking about life topic life topic is not going to be too heavy mm-hmm. but people it's not going to just we're, not, we're also not going to have guests it's just going to be like just having banter just like me just, we are talking just, now. just dealing with what topics what about your YouTube channel Harv at Harvey Official the same yeah. now so that's it like you literally the link's on in my bio mm-hmm. now so, because people are just starting to subscribe now to it. Right. So, because I've only just started it fresh. Um, so, yeah, people now, it's starting to we'll pick up We'll leave everything in the description. Yeah. What else can we finish up on, brother? One last question. What's the script of a book then? The fucking life that you've lived, man. That would be, that's a classic, man. You've got a bestseller there, bro. Well, I die, uh, the thing is, I was going I, I to go down the book line. Mm-hmm. But then, when I sat down with a very wise man that's deep in the game, he says that we need to make a film on you. So what, turn that into a film? Yeah, because he said it's, what's why a film on me would be good because it's showing the kids how you can how you can rise and fall and get to where you got to need to because people people think like, you know, the, the, the sad kid that, um, bless his soul, that got released by Man City and ended his life. I wish I could have been there to go, kid, there's only one failure, you can come back, you can do it again. Yeah. You can rebuild. Just because one door shuts, there's a million other doors to open. Mm-hmm. So I just want to show kids that you can come back from anything. True warriors evolve through adversity. Yeah. Don't let, I ain't letting the world swallow me, James. No, nah, you can't, man, because I, you, how many times do you get into abusers and the man says, I could have been a contender. Yeah. I could have been a footballer. You know where you fucked up. Exactly. I didn't want to be 40s and 50s and saying I could have been someone. So I made the changes in my 30s. Exactly. Because I know where I fucked up. The drinks, exactly. the drugs, the gambling, the lying, the cheating, the stealing. That's where I fucked up. As soon as I cut all them out, my frequency becomes oh, sharper. Man. And then what happens You're is, big into energies like me. Yeah, you know? yeah. But what you happened don't. was when I had ideas, I didn't need to ask any cunt. Yeah. Because when I had to ask people, they would talk me out their ideas. That's right. right. Because they've not got my vision. Because they ain't got your mindset, yeah, James. Yeah, so I thought, fuck it. Never, always yeah. say to someone, never go to advice to someone that's never done what you've done or yeah. shares the same goals. If you're trying to kill my vision, like I got one of my pals in pals in this room right now. He's sitting there. Me and him, yeah, we'd be sending him crazy messages at one thirty in the morning because he's inspirational. He he loves he life. That. He's inspired. He, mm-hmm. he, ain't, he ain't scared to try something different. Try mm-hmm. something new. He might say ten silly things, but one of them's good. Mm-hmm. That's the people I have in my side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All my business partners are Asian and white, and it's weird because they inspire me every day. Do you know why? When we talk, they don't talk gangster stories. They don't, they don't bring negative energy into my world. I'm only having people around me and next to my side that inspire me, yeah? And that share the same vision. Keep your negative ass and your negative thoughts out of my fucking world. Do you know what I mean? And go and sit in your miserable corner with your miserable people, whoever you are. Yeah. Not for me. Love it, brother. Harv, oh, come James, on it, mate. Honestly, I thought you, you so enjoyed much. that. Great Having story, me. man. Thank Honestly, you, no, thank, thank you, man. You. I really I appreciate mean, it. Can't wait to see what you do for the future. Thank you, God brother. God bless to your wife, your mother, thank you. your kids. And Same to you, this man. This is only the beginning, brother. Thanks a lot, brother. Cheers. Thank you. Check out more of my podcasts on the right. And be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.